bum, 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 bum. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Lunas Live with the Compas. We are back for this episode where we get into the latest news of the NFL. Uh, we'll give our takeaways from the Caleb Williams Pro Day at USC, the Canelo Munguia LA Presser. Yes, your compas were there. It was a very long day for me. By the way, LA, I have a I have a bone to pick with you. Uh, there was some good and some bad. Uh, we also today our grand get. How can I mean? Last week we have Haley Elwood. This week we get Lorenzo Neal. <laughs> we get Lorenzo Neal. Uh, we're obviously waiting to see. Uh, the dude has a busy schedule, so he's trying to fit us in. So hopefully we'll be able to get him in, ask him some uh, some thoughts on what's going around right now in the NFL. Um, plus, Vic, the producer, joins us for rapid fire to cap off this loaded episode. All right, Hilberto, I bet, bet, bet you have an engagement question for the viewers and or listeners. Yes, I do, Fernando. Before I ask the question, I'm going to put pressure on you. You are boys with Lorenzo Neal, so you better be on the show. I remember that one time you it's sort of high, cheated yeah. on me. You, you cheated on me, podcast cheater, right? <laughs> like You got two podcasts at the same time. Yeah. One was Lorenzo, so you do know the guy, but we're going to put the pressure yeah. on you to see if he jumps on. So it's a 50-50 shot right now, Fernando, so we'll see if it happens. Uh, but uh, for the engagement, question of the week, 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 week. If you're into college basketball, I became a college basketball fan like two weeks ago, you know? So I'm really uh, in tune with college basketball. March Man is my favorite time of the year. Fernando, March Man is, you better remember tomorrow's a special day. So uh, put that on your calendar or calendar or, or head, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, back to the point. Has your March Madness bracket busted? Have you have a do you have a bracket? You made a pool. Don't no gambling. Is it okay to gamble? I don't know. Whatever. But you make, okay. Yeah. You, you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know what? I'm not gonna lie. When I said it, I was like, I should have probably different. Okay. <laughs> we know it's March Madness, different terms. Has your bracket busted? There you go. So uh, I have UConn in my uh, championship round, but I, I'm one of those people that loves to do ups, upsets. So I picked UConn, the favorite, but then I have a bunch of upsets and that messed up my bracket for now should i say messed up instead of you know the sdsu is gonna bust your bracket on uh on thursday uh, i think the homer pick the, how no, far do you have to say going uh they lose to uconn i think that's where i have the to no no hell no right now they play uconn on thursday. oh you're right it's 316, yeah, yeah. I, I'm thinking I think about right. last year where yeah, somebody no, 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 no. in the final four. No, but... I have them. Uh, I had them going to the Sweet 16, and that was it. Uh, I thought they lost a lot of size, so I was like, yeah, no, I don't have them going further than this. So uh, that's where I basically yeah. had them going. Busted and lost a lot of size. All right, here we go, Fernando. Uh, that's exactly. it. That's the engagement question of the week. Has your March Madness bracket uh, gone up in flames? There you go. Better. <laughs> well, right now, let's uh, see what an individual, what he's got cooking up for us. <laughs> <laughs> is he gonna do a promo like it's on, your boy Danny Diego? How we doing, everybody? Anyway, let me get my serious face on because let me tell you something. I got some breaking news. Are you ready for this? Like Triple H says, no. I said, are you? He's angry ready? at you, by the way. Well, the okay. Copas are writers during the day and video analysis at by night. Well, they're putting it together now for Com for the Compas on the Beat newsletter. Yes, the Compas will be sharing news and analysis to your inbox every Thursday. They'll send you direct links to their latest interviews and keep you up updated with everything going on on the network. You already know what it is. One-stop shop for you. Brown will drop the knowledge on the Chargers. What NFL? What little football? What in WWE? Hilberto! Has got you covered with boxing, MMA, and NFL. And, of course, heck, we'll even be have a section for my music playlist of the month. Some country music in there. Lots of it. You already know. Little Luke Combs. What? Morgan Wallen. What? Coulter Wall. What? Vic, the producer, will share his movie recommendations. Like some two inside those. baseball. Baseball is my favorite. A little too slow for me. No violence. But the Compass will cover it all with a loaded newsletter every week. How can you subscribe, you ask? How? 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 Ho, ho! Let me tell you, it is simple. Visit CompassOnTheBeat.com. That is, one more time, CompassOnTheBeat.com. Yeah. There you'll see a shiny gold box where you can enter your email and then just hit the subscribe button. That's it. Boom! It's over. That's all you got to do. You're set to get the Compass on the Beat newsletter, and you want to jump in early because I hear the Compass on the Beat blog is coming in soon. 
Maybe your boy Dan and Dago will get in there and start typing a little things. You know, I see that stooge, that scumbag. Alberto! Do that. So if he can do it, anybody can do it. I might get in there. We'll see. Get some hot takes rolling. All right. Remember what to do. Go to compassonthebeat.com to subscribe to our newsletter. Let's get back to the program. Thank you so much for that, Dan and Dago. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for I know uh, Jorge and everybody uh, are kind of hoping. Uh, oh, damn. He's not here. Uh, so, like, it's going to be hard for. Uh, I know some of that, but. I mean, what happened? Yeah, no. Oh, <laughs> he's doing the, the French, French. So, yeah. What um, in, in Espanol. I'm like, ellos <laughs> güeyes over there. We're okay. making that fool do too much, Jorge. Jorge, unfortunately, Dan isn't here. Um, I don't want to give away any of the news that Dan has, but uh, he, I mean, the dude I'm is not killing aware it right now. The news, okay. He has news. Yeah, he just, uh, he, uh, what was, what, what was that song that Tatis put when he, uh, when he, subiendo de nivel, Dan just subir de nivel, uh, so, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. I'll let him tell it if he wants to tell it, but uh, Dan will be joining us uh, today. He'll be here tomorrow, though, for a special uh, celebration, obviously. But, uh, but yeah, he'll be here tomorrow. He's been kind of uh, in and out doing hmm. some stuff uh, the last few days. So, uh, uh, also oh, as, uh, go ahead. Here we go. It's in French. Let's go, compas. We we are here. There, there you go. go. Okay. There you well, go. Next time Dan is on the show, you got to quiz him with the French there. Moy forty two. I'm. I know. I butcher, I butcher your name. Well, he'll be here. Uh, he'll be here tomorrow. Uh, so make sure four o'clock, Gilbert. I think so. Make sure you guys. Yeah, are... four four thirty around that time. It's gonna be uh, what, is, what did uh Jorge call it uh Tuesdays with Dan or Thursday? Uh, Thursday. I don't Tuesday, know. Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday. Tuesdays with Dan. I don't know. Something yeah, like something that. like that. But uh, but yeah, Dan will be back. I know he wasn't here last week. Uh, he will be. Uh, oh, he said he will do it. Um, there you go. He will be here tomorrow. So, uh, so I hope you guys are excited because obviously, Athir, how are you doing? What's um, up? He'll, What's up, Athir? He'll, uh, he'll he'll be here. So make sure you guys are tuned in for all that. <laughs> so you uh, go from Papa you go. to Big Bear. Well, what's going on here? Oh, there you Dirty go. Dirty Dan, Dan Tuesdays. Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, when you mentioned uh, new level, no guacamole stop Monday. Stop it, Jorge. <laughs> the nasty guacamole and. By the way, shout out to everybody who watched the Haley interview last week. And those oh, I have a bunch of people. Who, who toughed it out, yeah, with the Love is Blind uh, section there. But, uh, Fernando, next time your brother jumps on the show, you mention a uh, new level, a different song in, in Espanol, but give him the hip-hop version, a, uh, ASAP Ferg, we're on a new level. Ooh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, and you know what's funny? That's the way I was going to go, but then I was like, uh, I'll go the this way. Not copyright issue. There you go. Ex that's why. So, uh... <laughs> Jorge says you're the oh yeah I, I brainwashed her okay by the way uh we appreciate everybody who watched last week but obviously like we we try and be really interactive with you guys and I know Gilbert will probably kill me for saying this but like oh. clowns that were in the comments like oh why are you guys talking about that hey we we talk about everything so I mean for the people who liked it we appreciate you guys for other people who uh were all mad and in the comments and trying to just be assholes like get out of here like we we we're gonna do different things you have to remember like yeah we try and involve people but this is our show in the words of gilbert this is our yeah, show our show. so if you want to do something different Haley was cool with it Haley's awesome so we did something different so i don't know why there was so much crap last week i mean hell, hey, it was 40 minutes long we did go 20 minutes charger 20 25, 25. And yeah then, and then yeah. you guys got to ask questions as well so i i didn't understand yeah i think our problem was, but... was not just c clipping out the portion and just chargers talk to uh, to please those people but also it's also an opportunity to promote what's up bolts with fernando ramirez and dan and dago daniel ramirez full name right there he has a real name by the way so he's all gonna be angry stuff. that you mentioned 24 Daniel, or does he want Daniel? We'll, no, we'll no, 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 because... Uh... Oh, wait. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> He's your brother. We could do the math here. But anyways, <laughs> Danny Dago is not related to Fernando. Go check out What's Up Boats. Hey, Jorge's the one that started that, by the way. And now people really do think that Dan is just me in a wig and wearing a hat and uh, with a beard on. So, uh, Sorry, so yeah, people are just... Uh, oh, we appreciate it. Uh, Poke Poppin' TV. Yeah, Haley was awesome. We did yeah. everything we could. Like, we we touched everything. The thing is, is that 
Haley loves the show. We watch the show, so we thought, oh, we'll we'll add some. We'll add some. Uh, yeah, you you forgot an ass after that. Um, and and a, a <laughs> es after that, dumb asses. Uh, but yeah, no, we appreciate Haley. Haley's awesome. Uh, she is one of us. So uh, she is truly uh one of a kind. Um, but yeah, I just had to get that out there. Um, again, we, uh, we appreciate everybody who watched. Um, we'll try and get better at letting you guys know who we're having on. Maybe in the morning, we'll tweet it out so that you guys, uh, know, uh, well, it's a little time. tough, Fernando. People sometimes could be like 50, 50, yeah, no, like, no, like, like our guy today. So. Yeah. Well, and that's another thing. Like, we don't want to tell you guys, oh, somebody's going to jump on and then something happens. But, uh, but the, yeah, I, I could tell Athir said, uh, he wanted to ask Kaylee, uh, Oh. Um, a question. Why didn't you ask Haley what happened to the Playmaker show? What's that? Uh, that's the one I think with the uh, uh, women in media. I think, right? Oh, oh, is that one it? Okay, I could, I could be wrong though. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Know. Okay, maybe. Um, uh, yeah, no. That, we'll be I see better. Kevin saying hello. Hello, Kevin. What's up, Kevin? Uh, we'll get better at doing that kind of stuff. Like, we'll uh, we will let um. We will uh, try and announce. Uh, the thing is, we just don't want you guys to be disappointed if the person doesn't end up showing up. But we'll be better at doing that. Uh, Gilbert and I will tweet it from the Compass page. We'll retweet it. Make sure you guys uh, stay tuned on that. Um, but like I said, it's kind of tough sometimes because you. I mean, people are busy, and then it's draft time. So yeah, and we're trying really to do it live busy, too. But, I think I think the Q and A yeah. portion at the end, we really like Fernando. Credit to you. you've been doing that uh, at the end of the of the interview. So to get them on live, it's a little difficult. Uh, obviously, we could have worked out you know, like a better time with, with Lorenzo, yeah. but I'm I, I still have faith. I think he's gonna jump on. I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the thing is too is that I, I mean I remember when I was like younger and I was a kid or whatever. Like I, I would have loved to have had people jump on a live or do this or answer my question. So I'm like, oh, like let's give people a chance to uh, answer questions and do that. So I mean, I'm always cool uh, doing that. Uh, oh, she would. Oh, there Got you it. go. Yeah, playmakers to show you. Well, wow, Athir, good job on that one. Let's clap it up for Athir. Um, and Gilbert, because Gilbert. I got remember, it. you got to start reading the comments for the audio people. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Shout sorry, out sorry. to the audio people. So, they, they they've been giving us crap because they only yeah. want to do audio. They don't want to see the mustache or Fernando's nice hair, so they go audio. And that's okay. There's a lot of traffic in L.A. or San Diego. They got to drive around. Oh, don't get me started audio. on that spit. Uh, Moise. Yeah, we could, we could, last sorry, week. Sorry, go ahead. No, sorry. Yeah. Looking forward to hear from Lo. Hey, we appreciate that. Yeah, we try and do all that stuff for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We had Canelo. Well, we had some Canelo stuff. We had uh, his trainer, Eddie Reynoso. Yeah. We had Oscar De La Hoya. I got right in his face and I was asking him questions. I could see he got kind of ticked off about the uh, right. Like the three questions I asked him, he seemed kind of like, uh, why? Like, I'm like, hey, it was a good question. Really... We're and trying Mungia to get really out there. Him. Yeah. Oh, that too. I think you, you yeah. know it with the Ryan Garcia question. Like, is the fight yeah. still on with David Haney? <laughs> but I wanted to know when he said, I think he said a thousand percent. But yeah, there's a lot of content on the channel last week. Uh, uh, thank you, Moy, for bringing that up. But yeah, from uh, covering uh, Canelo versus Munguia press conference to being at the pro day that uh, Kayla Williams had at, at USC, uh, a, a nice week for the for the compost. Yeah, no, 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 definitely uh, 100%. So, and then obviously we were at the USC pro day. We'll get into all that stuff right now. Um, but I think that, that's a good, uh, that was a good question. I should have, I'll ask her and I'll get back to you. I think, uh, I'll, there I'll text go. her later on and, and, uh, next week or tomorrow I'll have an answer for you at the year. So make sure you tune back in tomorrow. Um, I admire Haley for keeping your street, your streak alive. Can't please everybody. Yeah. No, 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 Delbert. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right on that one. Hey, um, hey, Delbert is a, a big time supporter. So we appreciate that. Yeah, no, no, no. We appreciate No, I've seen Delbert a couple of times. I appreciate He has some funny stuff sometimes. So I, I, I laugh at that. Uh, Kevin is wondering uh, thoughts on coaches interview today and hip oh, drop. You want to start um, with that? hip drop? See, look, okay. Let me, let me go to this real quick. So I've seen that there's a lot of, there's a mix between this. I think we're at the point where you might as well just bring flags out flags <laughs> and uh just start playing like that because it's it's an offensive driven league it looks like but here's some tweets that i saw um let's start off with uh kyle long i'm happy the hip drop tackle is out of the game i am all for the league trying to minimize the potential for serious injury this league has a hundred percent rate of injury but the hip drop tends to be uh the cause of injuries that are harder to come back from good job nfl hundred percent so what now it went to 99.9 percent .9 because of the hip drop sean merriman surprised me i'm glad they banned the hip drop tackle wow. the problem is there's so many un other unnecessary rules it comes across as another rule 
but they got this one right. Ryan Clark, go ahead and outlaw bringing offensive players to the ground. That's where it's headed. Make every game the Pro Bowl. This is getting ridiculous. Torrey Smith, what is a hip drop tackle? Anyone that is tackling someone bigger typically drops their weight. Folks have to be have been doing this with their dad, uncle, big brother, and living rooms for years. It's natural to do it when tackling someone bigger than you. Johnny Hecker, uh, former Ram, NFL banning football, wild. Darius Slay, it's about to be a lot of missed tackles. And then uh, and then I saw, oh, so then Will Compton goes, watch some ex-NFL offensive linemen who probably played for the Bears come out and say that the hip jack uh, penalty is uh, is a good thing. And then obviously Kyle Long obviously said it, so I thought that was uh, pretty <laughs> funny. And then uh, the, here's the um, – oh, yeah, watch this. NFL defenders next season. <laughs> when, they, when they see Derrick Henry next season, hey, it's starting to get to a point. You want to do kind of like a like a protest, and, and in the middle of a game, just kind of just go go ahead. Some some matador defense right there. Like I could definitely Bro. see that happening, Fernando. By the way, before we get to that, I just need to show this real quick, just because I got a laugh out of this. So, AQ Shipley, uh, former uh, center Super Bowl champion with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Dan and Dago's met him and got to talk to him a couple of times. He was out here in Coronado. Watch what he tweets. So here's Russell Wilson working out in a freaking uh, shirt. You can see him right here. Uh, he's in a Steelers shirt and and <laughs> he's wearing like all the greats it's and stuff glasses. like that, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's what AQ Shipley points out. He goes, nothing better than working out indoors with sunglasses. <laughs> Oh my God, I got such a kick out of that. But uh, but Gilbert, I mean, you you've heard what my stance is. I think it's uh, we're just yeah. headed to flag football at this point. Uh, what did you make of the uh, new rule? Yeah, I, I don't know. Like you know, when I saw the NFL PAs, uh, they they had that statement saying we do not agree. That's when I'm like, you know what? You can't get the players. The players are the ones doing the tackling. You can't get the NFL PA on board. You know, to me, it feels like it, it like. Put it on hold. Like keep keep trying to talk about it. Get people on the same page. Trying to figure it out because Fernando, honestly, I'm confused about, about what the defensive players have to do now. And if the players are confused, like who cares if I'm confused? If they're confused, they don't know what the hell to do. Like you mentioned, Fernando, if there's a smaller player trying to bring down George Kittle or Travis Kelsey, what the hell do you do at that point? You can't you can't go for the hip. You can't go low. You can't go for uh, you know above the shoulders. So I guess kind of like wrap them around the chest. But it's like. Like they've been learning this technique for years and years, like uh, people were saying. So, honestly, I, I get what the NFL is trying to do. They're trying to make the game, you know, last for many generations because there's too many concussions, too many injuries, torn ACLs, pop Achilles. Like it's a physical sport. But when everybody's confused, you can't just force people to change the rules. It's it's not like it's like it's not like the kickoff rule for Randall where people are saying, "Well, let's try something out for a year and we'll go back to it, or if we like it or not." This is actual. This is tackling. It's very important in football. You got to tackle. So. To me, if players are confused, yeah, I say you, you, should, you should wait it out. But all the owners approved it. I don't know why. Maybe the owners are getting scared that pe that you know the NFL won't be around in 30 years. I really don't get why they rush to do this. It's all about money when it comes to them. So for me, if the players aren't on board, it, I don't know. Maybe you could do like a poll where all, if it's like all the players in the NFL and, and most of them disagree, I say you wait it out. But right now, it just feels like everybody's confused. And, and what the hell are we doing at this point? Bring out the flags? I don't know, Fernando. Uh, you know, it's funny right now, um, uh, Jorge put, uh, he's like, this is the way the NFL players are going to have to, uh, are going to have to tackle <laughs> the DB. <laughs> and I got the squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think so. Like, imagine a small like DB trying to get down with, like, you know, Bro, like just, okay, somebody that we cover, Asante Samuel Jr. Yeah, imagine. Like, what that's going to be. be I understand that there's freak injuries, but we have to remember, too, is that you're just giving the referees more ammunition for all this yeah. stuff. Like, one guy right now tweeted out, hold on, I got this one. He goes, uh, Tony Romo, oh no, Jim, I don't know if he hip dropped here. Jim, let's go to the experts here. What do you got for us, Gene? Gene's territory. Yeah, obvious hip drop. That's going to cost uh, Buffalo 15 yards and a chance to stop Patrick Mahomes. Tony, wow, you can't help Mahomes uh, beat you. 
So, like, I, I've been seeing Charger fans also tweet out, like, it's going to be third and 15. The Chargers are going to stop <laughs> Mahomes, or fourth and 15. They're going to stop him by Joey Bosa, like, bringing him down, and then it's going to be a, a hip drop tackle. So, uh, There's yeah. There's going to be just, so many flags, like, from September to October. They're going to be like, they're not going to know Bosa. what it is. Okay, we don't know what a freaking catch is, and now we're going to know what a hip drop tackle is. Like, I don't, I don't I, know. I, I honestly, I get both sides. I get it. You're trying to protect the players. You want to, like, like imagine all, all these star quarterbacks got hurt last year, torn ACLs, uh, popped the kidney. So you got to protect the players. But, like, I, I don't know. This just seems too rushed to me. You got to figure out some, figure something else out. At least, like, teach the players what the hell to do because nobody knows what the hell to do. Yeah, no, I definitely. Um, uh, I, oh, by the way, uh, Lorenzo Neal just texted me. He said that uh, his. Um, uh, his mother-in-law is a little sick, so they're going to have to uh, take care of her. So he will not be showing up today. He said tomorrow might be better for him. So, may, uh, so maybe we will have him on uh, tomorrow. So make sure you guys are on the lookout uh, for that. Uh, hopefully um, yeah. his mother-in-law is okay. That's most um, important. But yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah, no, we'll definitely uh, try and have him on tomorrow. Um, you know, you know, it's funny. Lorenzo's favorite person, and it's not even me. It's Dan and Dago. So uh so that'll be interesting if he jumps on when Dan Dago's here because yeah, I know Dan everybody becomes friends with Dan for some reason. Bruh, I don't know why. So last year I went to a camp uh, and and uh, I took Dan with me and Lorenzo was there and they were just geeking out both of them like Dan just kept on telling Lorenzo, dude, you were an animal. Like you knocked people's heads off. You did this. You did that. And then Lorenzo was like, your brother's juicing me up, man. I like him better than I do you. I was like, yeah, that tends to happen a lot. So. Well, he is <laughs> so, a football yeah. coach, so that makes sense. Yeah, 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 exactly. But, um, but yeah, no. So uh, we'll definitely have Lorenzo on tomorrow. Uh, so make sure you guys do uh, tune in tomorrow. We'll probably have him on around the same time, around four thirty. Yeah. Um, so yeah, four four thirty. So uh, oh my god. <laughs> Actually, yeah, they they will be together if that happens. Yeah. Have Dan and Lorenzo on right. live. This right. will be gold. Jorge says, oh, man, please, please. Oh, yeah. Uh, hand sign emojis for saying thank you or praying. I don't know. Pray. There you go. Praying hands. Have Dan and Lorenzo on the live. This would be YouTube gold. I agree. There you go. So uh, you got everybody wants to see Dan with uh, Lorenzo tomorrow. If, if you got if more people. Uh, Imagine say, Dan uh, and Lorenzo talking about the the, the, the root change on the hip tackle. You know what? One of these days, uh, we have to get like we have to do a like a live, but like in person with Lorenzo. Like that way, Dan and Lorenzo can talk about like (laughs) these shows, hand placement, and this and that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, But uh, but yeah, I I don't know. And I and I see a lot of people coming out and talking about the hip uh, hip drop and stuff. But it's just like everything else. We don't know what a catch is. We don't know what uh, (laughs) uh, Jorge says. The stars are aligned. Are aligning uh, this Lorenzo Neal and Dan and Diego are meant to go live. There you go. Um, <laughs> Kevin <laughs> Shakira knows how to hip drop. Hey, you're not wrong on that hey, one. You could teach the class, you know, this offseason. Yeah. Why not? Oh, I take that class. I'd ace yeah, that I was going to say, I, I would. Uh, um, but yeah, and, and that's the thing is that there's so much controversy now because the catch, like some people say Des Bryant caught it, other people say they don't or that he didn't. People, the, the Seattle one, some people say it's a pick. Other people say it was a, um, remember the one where they had the replacement referees? Oh, yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think with this, this rule change, I think what we need to do now is enforce that referees need to be full-time employees. Um, I think this is it because you're, this year it could be a mess. Like, I'm telling you guys, I'm seeing a lot in other sports. I'm seeing a lot of people kind of go at referees a little bit more and more. And I mean, we all know what happens down in like Brazil and Colombia and all this other stuff. Like people are going to start getting even more mad at referees. So I think full time, like, and people are going to blame that. They're going to be like, they're not full time employees. We need somebody who's going to be here full time, all that. So I think this is the off season to make them full time employees, make them do what the players do, go through film, go through this, go through that, make them do all that stuff and, and uh, try and be better. I mean, you're never going to be able to take out the human element of it. But at the same time, I, I just think that they uh, mm. the NFL kind of dropped the ball with this one. Yeah. Are, you, are uh, you trying to say, Fernando, that Shohei Otani likes to bet on football? I don't know. Just, I mean, just say. I didn't say 
Sorry. He said his book. He did, did or his, book, <laughs> his translator did it's it. All. Translator did I've it. never <laughs> seen somebody trust their translator that much. I would never trust anybody to handle my money. Like that is crazy. Like supposedly they were like best friends, but I, I know. Yeah, I'm I don't give a shit. I mean, hey, you know what's like, funny? I think a lot of athletes and a lot of like celebrities do that stuff. But how many times haven't you seen like? where they kind of get screwed out or this or that. I mean, hell, like, I don't know if people have seen the show Shit's Creek, but he had somebody, um, Dan uh, Levy, um, he had somebody, uh, he had somebody oh, yeah. looking at his uh, finances and then that person screwed him out of all these money. So, yeah, it's, it's no, fake, there's no way. It, it's a good example, though. Well, yeah, but I mean, a <laughs> real life example. I mean, he did have the city, like, though. He bought a city. He didn't lose that. Yeah, exactly. Shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Shit's Creek. Um, but. I, I just wonder how many how many people haven't we seen how many athletes or famous people haven't been screwed by agents or this or that I just I I wouldn't I would not let anybody else touch my money I mean I I just don't get it but uh but yeah Kevin I I don't get it either I don't know how refs are not uh, full time employees that's just that's just um that's just weird to me but uh, Gilbert um are you done with the hip drop you want to move on to yeah something? Can, can we go on to a I, can well, i just answer of, one question because yeah, the was asking hip me. Up? yeah no no no. he had a question about um is it true the rumor that in the building they will trade back no matter who is on the board including uh uh marvin harrison jr uh i i don't know i think the way they've been talking about it it's uh the char he's talking about the chargers yeah um i think what these guys are going to do right now is they're going to see what because he said the draft starts at five so i think what i think he might be trying to bait <laughs> uh minnesota and a of jumping up in front of uh them with arizona and then they keep the fifth pick and and who knows i mean honestly it, it's hard to gauge what jim harbaugh's do that's why i told you guys they, like in the past like you can kind of see what staley and telesco were doing or anthony and and telesco like now these guys like the and and we thought telesco had his cards uh against his chest these guys just they put their cards down on the on the table. What, what, it, what did you call it, Fernando? What time of the year are we in? Uh, weirdo time. We are in weirdo time. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Do you no, notice right now, all these interviews at the owners meeting were all like, yeah, my phone's ringing for this trade offer. Yeah, we're not set on a quarterback. Yeah, come call us. It's all smoke the, the Patriots did it. The Cardinals have been doing it. Like, Who's going to say, been... yeah, we're set on a quarterback. Yeah, we're set on Marvin Harrison. They're all saying come call us and you have a, a like a massive offer we will maybe take it that's all they're doing right now it's really annoying but it's it's part I, of the game i hope on 420 somebody is like oh this trade is happening and they're like no it's all smoke don't you see it's 420 like <laughs> i would i would get a kick out of something like that what if there's a, a gm on on april 1st on april april fool's day saying hey i'll offer you oh, eight first round picks for this guy and he's like psych it's april fool's yeah who was it that like was like oh so is this somebody called the patriots right and asked if uh oh it was the rams didn't they call what? and say like is tom brady available like the rams called somebody called the patriots that a real one time and then they sport? asked was tom brady available on april 1st no 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 just in general and like that they hung up the phone because they asked that but <laughs> i can't remember who that was uh john king accounting firm <laughs> um but yeah he's still promoting it, i don't know he's still trying uh, as a boxer promoter oh my god jorge is always trying to change our our name compas on the bone uh <laughs> and you know what's funny jorge i've never smoked a day in my life so uh there you go um i cannot say i <laughs> what were you uh what were you saying you wanted to move on to what oh yeah i just wanted to go off of more rule changes and i wanted to ask you are you have you caught up on the new kickoff i guess proposed yeah yeah, rule? yeah i remember when we were uh doing the xfl stuff I remember. Oh, is I that don't what they got remember. it from? I forgot. Yeah, already. yeah, yeah. I don't know if you remember. I actually tweeted out, "This is what the XFL is doing." I'm like, yeah. I could see it in in uh, in the NFL in a couple of years, and now, I was, yeah, I was trying to catch up who likes it, and Andy Reid apparently loves it. Uh, so yeah, he called it exciting. I, I, don't, I don't remember it being that like I guess you know of a game changer, especially in the XFL. But I guess it seems like you liked it, Fernando. Well, I mean, I, I didn't think it was bad. I just thought that that's where the NFL – the NFL wants explosive plays, yeah. as you can tell with everything that they're doing. So that's an explosive play. That's something that could end up uh, being better for them. I know they're big on the whole, uh, oh, the, you, you're you're not running down the field like a psychopath, stuff like that. I think yeah. now you can – if I if I'm not mistaken, you can load up on uh, – off on uh, – uh on onside kicks right like you can load six on one side or seven some maybe i'm wrong 
I don't I think thought so, I saw but like, you, I, don't, I don't I just I just did the research on the kickoff rule and it's like they had the kicker all the way by themselves and then there's two uh, returners who could catch the ball or maybe return if they want to uh, by themselves and then the rest are all together I forget where maybe the 40 35 yard line they're all just together waiting for the play to develop and then they start going off without having the whole collision like you mentioned yeah yeah I mean I I'm honestly just uh I'm, it's, I'm it's ready a good to way to keep the special teamers, you know, they're, they're, they they need their jobs too. They got the kick returners and all that. So I think I like them for that. But I wanted to get your thoughts, and I think I think we're both on the same page. I was still confused about it until I you, I could just watch the film on the XFL, and I totally forgot about it. Oh look, here we go. <laughs> I found my tweet. Oh yeah. Uh yeah. I'm not one to pat myself on the back, but hold on, let me freaking. So when it passes, uh, you better do the retweet. Yeah, I should have. Yeah, I should. Well, actually, I can't. Can I can't because of what I put. Vince McMahon oh. in the XFL might be onto something here. The kicker is at the 35 yard line, but the kickoff yeah, team it. is on the opposing 35 yard line and can't move until the returner catches the ball. This is to prevent collisions. Wonder if the NFL will adopt. Would adopt. It's a good one. Yeah, I remember. I still want them to take that freak instead of the onside kick. You take the fourth and 20 from whatever 25 yard line, and then if you get it, you move on. <laughs> That's the one you I want to see. You have my curiosity, but now you have my attention. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, some guy goes, this is awful. Well, guess what? Oh, wow. Okay. It's a it's a reality now. I'm um, not saying it's the best thing, but it's a good way to kind of solve the issue by injuries, but worth a try. Yeah, no, I'm not. I, I'm also of that uh, mindset. If you guys are just coming in uh, to listen to Lorenzo Neal, um, Lorenzo had to go deal with a family issue, so um, he will be on tomorrow uh we're hoping he will be on tomorrow at around the same amount of time uh jorge is pushing for dan and dago and lorenzo neal uh together i think uh so we're definitely um we're definitely on pace for that jorge is asking is that what they're doing with the new with the kickoff rule yes jorge that is what they're uh they're expecting to do so it hasn't passed yet but i think i think it's no. gonna pass in a couple of days but they're trying to propose it so the hip drop thing already passed though that's already passed yeah that's that's done okay um yeah i guess uh pfft. uh but i mean we'll see uh we're all pushing for dan and lorenzo um yeah no i i, I okay let's see uh kevin is gonna make me uh speak and read a lot what happens in the future of college football players make more than rookie draft contracts including endorsement deals i think caleb is going to wake some people up rook, uh, rookie with a brand yeah that's it did you see what uh jalen johnson said by the way Oh yeah, don't bring the Hollywood stuff over here. I like it. Yeah, he's a veteran. No, yeah. I I love it. He but just got they, paid. He has security now. If you're already coming in with that kind of notion in there, that's going to be a little bit dangerous. You know what's interesting, uh, Kevin, and and we'll talk about this more with Dan and Dago tomorrow because I'm 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 sure he's going to uh, want to say something about it. But um, I think I think Dion right now is setting uh setting us up for uh the potential oh man of you heard I what he said that. I saw that the Eli trying to pull a Eli Eli yeah. yeah 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 so I definitely uh I definitely think that something like that's gonna happen um but I if Shadur somehow has like a really amazing 2024 season and he's like the next best thing then sure but he's like if he would have entered the draft right now apparently he would be what the sixth best quarterback Dion said he'd be the second quarterback in this draft Man, i don't know i felt like he kind of fell off like he got he got a lot of hype early on and then it kind of became like he might be the fourth to fifth so i don't know um i just yeah, don't like I, the approach but i get it you got to sell but yourself I, but i think he's gonna change I, but i think that's gonna open the floodgates i really do with uh, what like what kevin is saying yeah the more control and everything get, else, yeah. i think they're gonna open the floodgates and it's gonna be even worse now um but uh i mean well, that's how it is. Like even in regular society, though, if the, the bigger brand you get, you get the more followers on YouTube or the more Instagram followers, the more money you get, and it's be made people do like, like you mentioned, weirdo stuff on weirdo time. So yeah, uh, here we like to be. You want to be authentic and real. Come to Compass on the beat. That's my sugar. Exactly, matter. exactly. But I, I just, uh, I just wonder what's gonna happen. But I, I'm telling you, slowly but surely, we're opening up the floodgates for stuff like that. This, like next. And remember, he didn't. No, no, I'm about Russia door. He said Travis as <laughs> well. And then he said so, Shiloh too. Uh, maybe he said maybe. You know, uh, <laughs> you know what? If Coach JB said Shiloh's going in the fifth, sixth, seventh round anyway, nobody. <laughs> he's he ain't gonna have a say. So, uh, but I actually do. I mean. 
I, I wouldn't doubt that somebody team would take uh, Shador uh, next year. High. There were some games where I was impressed with him. There were some other games where I wasn't. But like that Colorado State game, I, I was pretty impressed pick overall. With the He's huh? a quarterback. He could be the first pick overall. He's a quarterback, and it's he supposed could. to be a weak, a weak class in 2025. Yeah, he could. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm really interested to see kind of what happens with uh, Shador and with all that. But, uh, Gilbert, let's uh, let's yeah. move on a little bit. We were Speaking of Caleb Williams, we were at his pro day. Um, oh, just real quick. Jorge said, I don't think that'll go well and uh, go uh, over well in locker rooms. I mean, he already has Keenan Allen, who we'll talk about right now. He's he's already right there, so that's a big uh, plus for Caleb. Shador has to be the Heisman winner, or else he won't have much say. I think so too. I think this is a big. Uh, Moy says that uh, this year Shador was stat padding at at some point. Yeah, towards the end, you could totally tell he was. And then it wasn't a good look that Dion's like, well, my son's not going to play. Like he's he's hurt. He's not going to play. Uh, they need to protect him better up 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 uh, on the offensive line. So I don't know. Um, I don't know what you think. Uh, I don't know. Like I, I like I, like I want to be the old school guy saying I hate all. This, I'm glad Shador stayed though. I don't think he yeah. should have come out this year. Well, this this year would again have been he hard. he like you're making money now in college football. He he knows he his his dad's trying to build a program into a winning program. They had a rough year. If he leaves, like they lose their star quarterback, so they need him for that. So I get why he stayed. You're getting paid. You're helping out your dad build the program, and then also you're probably going to be a top three, top five pick next year because the quarterback class is weak. And you know, Fernando, there's every single year in the draft, five to seven teams are desperate for a quarterback, so they they could take a chance on a, a Shadur Sanders. And I get, remember the year, remember Kenny Pickett, 2022, he went in the 20th. Uh, pick in the first round there was almost no first round quarterbacks i can't remember the last time fernando maybe you remember that a quarterback did not go in the first round i think ej Manuel was the only one in what 20 i remember that yeah so, he was it, so, so there could be some rough years but shadur is i think he was a be he will be a better prospect than like an ej Manuel or kenny pickett so but the problem is going to be with shadur for being honest is that he's going to come in and he's been taught only under his father so what yeah. is the next team gonna hire yeah. him? Hire him as the head coach? Like, I, I hope he has problem. a private workout coach, a, like a different kind of style or play style, just kind of get him ready for the NFL. But I then again, I don't know. Yeah, I I, I don't know. Uh, Prime is going to is going on a path where he is throwing players he recruited under the bus. He's recruiting class this year. It's not very good. Um, the last I do I do agree do with that more real quick, mind. but but I think. Uh, Deion Sanders is building the program to the way the kids are nowadays, like the whole NIL. He knows how to do that. You want attention? Come on. You want to get paid? Come on here. But the whole stuff that you just mentioned more, I, I agree. That could be an issue. No, I, I completely agree with that. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting. But, uh, speaking of, uh, speaking of Caleb Williams, uh, Gilbert and I were both there at his pro day. Uh, we'll get, we'll do Wednesday first and then do what we did on Tuesday. All right. Um, we were at his pro day on uh, Wednesday. Gilbert got there right on time. I was, uh, they waited for him till they got started. I got there uh, so early that it took two hours after I got there for them to get going. At least a throwing session with Caleb. I'll just say that. That's true. Yeah, that is true. Uh, but we got to see Jeff Miller. Uh, we got to chat with some other people. Um, so that was pretty cool. They had donuts. I was surprised with how many donuts they had there. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and it was Randy's, which was actually pretty good. I, I was, say, I only uh, had one. I was proud of myself. I wanted to get, oh yeah, one. I only had one. Um, I, well, yeah, I, no, uh, yeah, no, I only had one. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking, I was like, wait, no, you well, did last year for a bit. I don't know where you went. Last year I had two. No, no, no. I had to jump on a, <laughs> on a podcast that somebody had asked me to jump on. Um, but, uh, just, I'll tell you this. Brendan Rice looked really good. That, yeah. that kid, I mean, I, I remember I asked him the question. Gilbert's like, man, you're all over the place. Because, uh, like, if, if you can tell on one video, I'm on this side. On another video, I'm over here. On another video, I'm over there. Like, the scrum was just too much. Like, I saw Nick Hamilton get out of there and our, our compa, Nick Hamilton, and he was sweating bullets because, like, everybody was just on top of him. So, uh, <laughs> Jorge, is that what you gave up? Did you give that up for Len or or, <laughs> or what? No, I'm just wondering. Uh, I know yeah, Dan and Diego give up don't, soda. Don't so. give up the whole. I think that's yeah. <laughs> You're the worst. Um, so uh so yeah, so Brendan was actually really good. I, I thought his face kind of like illuminated when I asked him about the Chargers. And he goes, yeah. yeah, man, I love Jim Harbaugh. Like, 
Harbaugh's, uh, uh, like we had, uh, oh, he gave up caffeinated coffee. Oh, wow. that's tough. I, I can't Congrats do that. To you. Yeah. Um, so he, uh, Brandon was like, yeah, I had dinner with them. They're awesome. They, uh, I really love Jim. Another thing that got me about what he said about Jim was, uh, the fact that he said that Jim heavily recruited him out of, uh, out of high, out of high school. So oh, I was wow. like, oh, I've been saying college everywhere else. And now I got high school. So boom. Uh, so he heavily recruited him. So it'll be interesting. I actually thought we were going to see Jerry Rice there, but then I thought, no, you know what? It's his son's day. Why would he be there? So, uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, saw Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen was there. I uh, got a chat with him for a little bit. Uh, been drinking decaf. It's basically black water. <laughs> um, Jorge, I think third round would be where Brendan is probably going to go. So if the Chargers are going to go, I mean, I, I, who knows? Maybe with the way their team's looking right now, they could go receiver, um, corner, or defensive player, and then receiver again. Uh, in the draft, he's starting so. to get comparisons to Puka Nakua, so he might go up a little higher than that. I feel like, yeah, yeah, no, you you just never yeah. know. And the like he's not big. as fast, good routes, but he's a big dude, physical, he could block. I think he might go up a little bit. I don't know, but you could be Caleb's, right Caleb's best throw was a throw to him, it was a uh, an in route, and it was a deep in route, and he had to adjust his body to catch it. Make of that what you will. Uh, but he made a, a a very good grab out of it, and I was like, "Wow, okay, that was pretty uh, that was pretty interesting." Um, the way he kind of adjusted his body. So, um, no, Jorge, I, I don't know. A creative Chrome. We'll we'll get to you in a second. I don't think he's getting that hype because of his dad. I think it's because he he's kind of a he was at USC, kind of coming up and all that, and and I don't think the I don't th he just doesn't seem to me Gilbert as a kid that like. Like his dad is his dad, and he's his own man. That's yeah. kind of the way I've gotten it. Like, I mean, Shador I've actually liked that he's gone. Different. He's gone a bunch of. I don't know if you saw him last week. He went on a bunch of TV shows last week, and he got asked about his dad constantly, and he didn't care. He's like, I'm, I'm cool with it. I'm used to it. They even asked him, "How's it being hanging out with Bronny James at USC? You guys have kind of similar stories with your dad's being famous." And he was taking a good approach. I don't care. I'm my own person he's here. Different. I'm gonna. Uh, we could figure it out. So some people are kind of like, I don't want to talk about my dad. I know he's famous. I want to create my own path. But he embraced it, and I think that's kind of a good sign. Like somebody like, whatever question you want to throw at me, I'm okay. I'm good. With, I'm good with it. But for now, no, you're right. He stood out at the workout. And I'll say this about Caleb Williams' workout. It was very thoughtful of him to participate in the throwing session to put eyeballs on his teammates. But he wasn't going like a full workout. That wasn't his best stuff there. Unless there's something going wrong here for the number one pick in the draft. But it wasn't his best like full workout but brendan rice did pop out for me i'm like this guy's physical cut make some good cuts there obviously they're in shorts there but uh the way he spoke to the media the way he worked out seeing him making the rounds i was pretty impressed with him you know what's funny if you say something negative about caleb's pro day everybody like jumps down your throat but i wasn't really all, be, i was like maybe oh, the number one like, pick why why do you want to kind of yeah. have an intense workout but he participated yeah, but that, that's that was good for his team after when he comes up and he's like oh i thought that was a great one i'm like bro come on you and i both <laughs> know you could have done way better than that but he was i mean it is what it at is. First. he kind of answered that he missed some throws and he was being honest but you're right you know what i'm sorry so gilbert and i have been doing this for a while and i'm very disappointed in gilbert for the first time and probably since i've known him I thought Gilbert I was gonna shout out. Are you are you scared of uh of competing? And that's why you didn't. <laughs> are you afraid to compete? Hey, I didn't tell you. So I guess I posted another Kayla Williams uh, uh video on my IG for IG Real, and yeah. I guess the my other video where where somebody asked him, "Are you afraid to compete?" The first question off the bat in India at the combine it was, I guess it's getting more more pop now because he had his pro day. I, I, a couple people hit me up on, on my DM saying, "You're the worst." journalist why would you ask that question you're terrible i'm like what the hell did i do it's like 50 saying what do you mean f me for what are you talking about i, I, I didn't ask the question i just fucking sorry <laughs> i just posted it <laughs> i'm getting so fired up but people are coming at me in the dms like i asked the question are you afraid to compete obviously he's not afraid to compete he won the freaking heisen but i get he's kind of a, a hot topic right now what do you mean Bro, f me that is hilarious i can't believe people actually came at you for that one uh but I mean, what do you expect? I mean, you can't you can't please them all, I guess. But that is freaking hilarious that people. Uh, it's like when uh, your boy, the referee overseas in Europe, uh, when he screws over. Uh, Gil Manzano. 
yeah, Real Madrid. Like people think it's me. What do you mean you F me for? Exactly. Yeah. People just come at Gilbert for no reason. Uh, I think that's hilarious, though. <laughs> Or he asked if you kiss your mother with that mouth. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I got, I got fired up, yeah. Um, but how do you feel about Caleb? Uh, well, I think he's a good he's a good quarterback. He's he's a good prospect. Like he's not tall, like like we mentioned, remember we saw him in person, you'd think he'd be a little taller. Like he's not like Kyler Murray or Bryce Young. He's not like under six feet, he's like six one. And I think he made the comparison to Aaron Rodgers when we when I when I saw him at the pro day, not the pro day, the combine. I'm the same measurements as Aaron Rodgers. Okay, cool. You got that. You could say that. But he's bulky. He could take a hit. He's kind of like a massive dude. So when he was walking around, you could tell he has he has that 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 weight to kind of take a couple of hits. But he has a he has a nice strong arm. You know, he could create away from the pocket. He he's okay with, you know, playing, you know, with pressure and not being in structure. Like I kind of want to see him actually play in structure. Like he he does too much backyard football, Fernando, and he gets in trouble doing that too much. That's kind of his knock. Like like I think so, I forgot who I forgot who was saying this, but like, can he play with rhythm and timing? Can he do yeah. that? Like, all the weapons that he has in Chicago, like I know it's not like San Francisco or Brock Purdy, but the reason Brock Purdy is doing well, he has the timing that he knows how to kind of get with the rhythm of the offense. Boom, Debo there. Boom, kid over here. CMC over here. Can you do that in a structure, or are you all about chaos and doing things on the fly? Me, and when you're a young player, you could you could yeah. get in trouble. And remember Aaron Rodgers? He didn't play for the first two or three years, and then he had to wait, and then he was ready to go. Gilbert, I feel like I failed you with not being able to get Lorenzo Neal. Why? But I don't know. I, I, I feel bad. But you know what? I got something for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually expecting like a video of him or something. But is that really you? Can uh... Y'all thought I was dead. Chief Squinda! <laughs> no, no, no. Wait. We've done this before. We we've done this before. Can you tell me what day it is, Dan, and what time? I do not know the date. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I You're AI. Host. You're fake. Am, You're an AI. Exactly. I'm a deep fake. Call me Kate Middleton. I'm supposedly alive, and here I am, dude. Look at this. <laughs> what are we doing? You're gonna notice this is a shaved shirt from like a month ago. Dissect my hands and no freckles and everything else. It probably is a deep fake. Who knows? Hmm. I can't tell. Is it really him? But nice to see you, fake Dan and Dago. Good to see you also. How are you doing? Look at that. Hilberto is speaking foul apparently on the show because yeah, he's saying sorry. things that w warrant he'll, uh, Jorge asking if you kiss your mother with that mouth, Hilberto. And what next time somebody spreading? comes at me in the DMs, Dan, can I get a video of you saying, uh, I don't know, say something foul to them and then I'll just send them that video of you. <laughs> what did they say? That Someone said something? Yeah, like, I don't know if you heard. Somebody said that I'm the idiot who asked that question to Kayla Williams. Are you afraid to compete? I'm like, it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> so next time people attack me, I want a video of you, you know, cussing them out, and I'll just you know, uh, send that. Uh, to them. Uh, uh, Obviously, a deep uh, fake has <laughs> had to disappear when he flinched. <laughs> or I thought you'd be hyped to see your boy. Hey, but let me tell you something. Uh, you already know why people ask those questions, just to go viral, to get clicks, dude. And hey, it was uh, it did awesome for our uh, Instagram. So we appreciate that guy taking the fall for it. What do you think about the hip drop tackle? <laughs> <laughs> Thank God you brought this up. <laughs> I it our, our is unbelievable. It is unbelievable how Mickey Mass this league is becoming. It, it's the most idiotic thing ever. Like, and the thing that bothers me, it's like if you're trying to attract kids who are playing tic tac toe, like that's one thing. But like, this is ridiculous. Like, how how is the defender seriously supposed to tackle the offensive players now? It's idiotic. They can't go high. They can't go low. Now what? They're just supposed to hope to God they'll run out of bounds and honor, you know, scouts. The bear code, hug. Scouts honor. Learn it's the stupidest hug. thing ever. The league's becoming a joke. Like, in my opinion, um, again, hot take, but the past few Super Bowls have been a joke. It's been a mockery of the game because, you know, we're just tipping the scale one way for idiotic reasons and people. So I'm not a fan of it. But let me tell you something. I saw something the other day that made me very excited. What? Supposedly Jim Harbaugh set, was it Jim Harbaugh? No, Andy Reid sat in between. I think Harbaugh and John. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. He was front and center in the picture. You let me no, tell you something. He, Andy Reid's getting a little more white on his hairs, dude. He's nervous. He's nervous. You're you're He's got, too uh, much, by the way, Dan. I think you might be a fake. Up, up, a clone. Up, up, <laughs> up. Dan, Can real quick, uh, robot. Damn. Am I what actually glitching? I look fine to me. 
I look fine to me. Mm. What What did you make of this? I've been talking to Justin every chance, you know, every chance I get. Yeah, any reason I can, you know, get the, you know, call Justin, just check on, you know, how how things are going on the uh, on the ranch up in Oregon. You know, I lo I love hearing stories about that. I've been talking to Justin every chance, you know, every chance I get. No, I said any that. I said that in our group chat. Am I still glitchy or do I look fine now? No, you're Much fine. Sure. Okay. You're the uh, real Dan I said, I said that in our group chat. I said, if I had Herbert's number, I'd be telling him every day also to see how he's doing. That He needs to be protected. This is ridiculous. Well, we, but you know what? We're going to be A-okay. Because who's got it better than us? Freaking nobody, dude. It's about <laughs> to get wild. Hmm. Did uh, I, uh, did, uh you your know brother send the bat signal for for Dan to come on the show? Is that how, how'd, you, how'd you get the word to jump on, Dan? Bro, I'm, I'm here 24 seven. I'm always ready to go. <laughs> You're lucky I haven't crashed this thing yet. I just want to let the audience know. Do you know what this scumbag said last week in the chat? He's like, "Oh no, don't worry. Let's cut him at. Let's cut him at this week. No Dan and Dago this week. Yeah. So I guess I did owe you an out. appearance. You're you're right. Okay, Impossible. Fine. I can never be stopped. I have big guy energy, dude. I'm an athlete. But yeah, when it comes to the hip drop tackle, <laughs> like you're seriously going to tell me these re refs are going to enforce it correctly? It's the most idiotic thing. You know what this reminds me of? You remember when they, uh, you remember uh, when they did the whole can't fall full weight on the quarterback? Yeah, it's going to yeah. cluster f Flags. just like that, dude. You watch. Um, with friends, just might as well call it. At this point, why not just make flag. it seven on seven? Is that what they want to move towards? Yeah, no, hold seven on, on for seven a second. You're, you're kind of you're kind of cutting in and out. Let me remove you and bring you back in. How is it now? I don't know what it is. It might be the Wi-Fi. I have like two bars. Oh, let me see. Uh, well, you sound you sound better right now. Um, well, here yeah. I am. A da -da -da hurricane. You know, uh, Dan was in L.A. today to witness what happened. Uh, a police raid happened today, and Dan was there to oh my witness God, it. What are you oh, trying yeah? to do to me over here? What are you trying to do to me over here? I was nowhere at all <laughs> with law enforcement. Don't you dare. Dan, there's a, there's a new thing that just came out uh, right now. Let's check this out. Let's see. You know, gone through all his tape, all his throws. Uh, he can make them all. Uh, but, you know, getting to know him, just, just how much he's – how much it's about the team and about winning, um, how much he puts into it, how much he cares about it. Um, there's that, there's that part of him that, you know, he wants it to be about the team. Um, yeah. Just being able to, you know, to, to make that step, you know, to big to facts, winning. Kevin, uh, big facts, Jorge. I know that's why, why, why he's in it. Um, so exciting. Yeah. He looks so he's like exciting, but he's kind of like it's a people really have no idea what's about to happen. Like, everyone's about to get put on notice. I was telling this to someone the other day, like, I already made a bet, Chargers are going to make the playoffs without a doubt as a wild card or winning the division. Who knows? Not even April, Dan. Come on, can you buddy, wait to see the draft, buddy? Buddy, it doesn't matter. We have Jim Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh, and the set of Odin. We're going to be okay. Then, on top of that, we have like a last place record. Or whatever else, or a last place schedule. I saw the teams that were playing. If we don't win more than ten games, we should all just retire the franchise. It's over. <laughs> Jorge, uh, Jorge says, "Did you guys see the annual coaches photo? Harbaugh was sitting next to Reed. I think the mental warfare has yeah, begun. Exactly. He was it's right in the middle of the baby. Gilbert, he was right in the middle of that picture, though. Like, you know right what he said? A lot of respect, said, right there. He said, I "Hey, know. Big Red, you're in my chair, son." Get out of here. That's right. The son of Odin, dude. He's about to sling hey, that They got thing. the Super Bowl champion coach and the college football coach. I think it's fair. Yeah. Right in the front and center. Oh, well, you know, when you get handed things, it's, <laughs> uh, yeah. they just put you wherever. You just do whatever try you winning want. One of, try winning a natty. How difficult is that? Huh? And what, what do you think about uh, a couple, like your music is hit a couple of times and Gilbert gets all nervous. He gets all twitchy. But you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? You know. It's just, that's what I do to people. It is what it is. They can't handle me. I'm too much. You know what I'm saying? They can't handle the enthusiasm, the energy, the tenacity. That's what happens when you're great. And you, I, I feel like Kobe sometimes when I come on, you know, I've yeah, seen the way yeah. you work. You think I'm going to pass you the ball? Psych. I have high energy at all times, dude. I'm ready to go at yeah. all times. I, I am afraid what? to compete with you. Exactly. Boom, boom, boom. 
Double dribble. Go. Oh no, that's a foul. Never mind. <laughs> I don't even watch basketball anymore. It is what Dan, it is. Dan, who what? is uh who's this? Shadur. Oh, actually, yeah, let's talk about Shadur oh, and oh, his oh, comments. <laughs> Do you enter this season with more motivation, or is it about the same or because you could maybe see the light at the end of your college career tunnel, does it you know drive you even more to go be no. the number one overall pick? No, I've been I've been seeing the light since day one, since I've been in college overall. Uh, since when I got to the platform and I came from a private school. So at the end of the day, I dealt with a lot of negativity, a lot of hate, a lot of everything I done dealt with already year after year. I came from a small private school. Uh, all the other kids was going big, you know, power five, and they went to big 6A Texas, 6A schools and stuff. I don't see those same kids around. Oh, wow, he's throwing he's shots to, while he's at it. Going to a private school, a good thing in high school. I don't, I don't. I guess. Well, he said a small private school, so who knows? Oh. But uh, going back to that, right when he was talking about in that video, by the way, I thought it was hilarious because uh, Dion even goes talking about Travis and uh, uh, Shadow. Oh, yeah. Then he goes, <laughs> "Don't forget about Shiloh now." And it's like, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, Shiloh, and Shiloh, Shiloh's and Shiloh. back there. Follow Shiloh. <laughs> but like, he has no honestly, say. <laughs> And honestly, I think uh, I, I mean, I think a lot of it depends on this year and what Colorado does. But like Shadur is a first rounder to me, or a top four it would be tough in my my opinion, just because, you know, it's not like he's coming from a big time football school. You know what I mean? Like the Buffs are still on the recovery. Like the hardest team, I don't even know who's the hardest team they played. Maybe U- USC, Oregon. And it's like that's not super well, prime time. Changing, but, uh, well, yeah, and year. that's the other thing. But it's like you know what's going to happen. You remember a few years ago when uh, Lamar got drafted and Dion was interviewing him on stage, and he's like, "Oh, hey, by the way, uh, to uh, Aussie Newsom, right? That's the GM at the yep, time. Yep, yep, I don't yep. think he's okay. Yeah, it's like Aussie Newsom. I appreciate you, dog, or something like that. So maybe he's going to call in a favor to somebody. Just say, see, I told you my boys top four. I told you my boys top four. But Dan, I don't, I don't ask, you, honestly. Dan, let me ask you if you're if you're Miami. Are you get? Are, would you rather draft Shador or would you rather? Oh, give, give me Shador, <laughs> dude. I would rather take Shador. But the thing, the thing that people don't understand also is like, you get Shador, you get Dion, and I think that's going to be a huge problem that people are not looking at right now. Why? He's going to be busy coaching the Buffaloes. What, what, why? Would that's what you it? think. That's what you think because supposedly, again, supposedly he's coached from their whole life, from the youth to the high school to the college. You think he's going to let someone else maybe trust him in the NFL? I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't think – I think if someone's stupid enough to sign him as the head coach, that's right. <laughs> Shadur. Shadur. What did every, hey, Jorge, everybody liked the way Dan pronounced his name at Radio Road, too. Yeah. He kept on saying it, and people were laughing. Hey, you saw him, too. Remember he was walking by? Oh, yeah, he was walking by. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. like, that's my thing, like – I don't think they understand really you know, how you know big what pissed, of a, you know what pissed off Dan is that he was showing off his bling and his shoes oh yeah. and his wardrobe. So <laughs> stupid, dude. But but that's the problem. That that's the problem. The guy already thinks he's arrived, and I understand. Like, it's not very. It's it's like I think there's this is my thing, right? Just so I can break down. I think it's a lot different from Dion coming where he came from, thinking he's the best. You know, acting like he's the best, you know, thinking like he's a dog because that was a chip on his shoulder. That was like a persona he had to, you know, put on to carry him that far with no, you know, like it wasn't, I'm sure it wasn't an easy road for Dion to get to the NFL and everything else. You know, now on the flip side, you're seeing Shadur, who, you know, has a household name, you know, obviously has a lot of uh, uh, ability to get. Yeah. train yeah. Uh, get out of here get out of here <laughs> has has a lot of uh, has the ability to get the trainers has the ability to you know go to the right schools and everything else has the ability because he's well known because of his last name to get recruited like i don't think that plays the same way if you know what i mean like it's different for dion being hungry thinking he's arrived to Shadur having everything and thinking he's arrived. You know what I mean? It's like they say about fighters. A fighter can think he's the best and still wake up every single morning at 5 a.m. But once he's laying in bed in silk sheets and he's made it, that's when it gets a lot harder. So I think that's where you're going to see with Shadur a little bit more. Or in Roadhouse. Or find himself acting in Roadhouse. Get out of here. Have you guys seen it yet? Yeah, Yeah, of course we did. We'll talk about it Tuesday. We'll talk about it Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Uh, But like that. 
it's it's a lot different. You know what I mean? Like being hungry and getting to it as a and as a you know you have to do it to help out your family and everything else. To kind of doing it as a side hobby because I mean, for God's sake, he's taking meet and skipping meetings to go to Fashion Week. That doesn't tell me he's bought in too much. <laughs> Dan, uh, we are gonna uh, have to let you go. We appreciate you jumping on. Let me ask you real quick though. Uh, Jorge yeah. wants to see. So uh, Lorenzo had a family emergency he had to attend to. So he's going to be jumping on tomorrow. Uh, Jorge would like you to join us when we, when we do that. Are you okay? Or would you want to do that? <laughs> I don't know what you want me to do. I'm not the <laughs> question asker. I'll hey, you, and Lorenzo have a bro you and Lorenzo have a bromance. Oh, well, that that's my dog, dude. Like, I remember growing up watching that guy. That guy was a freaking dog. And plus, Ralph, tell the audience the truth. What's up, Danny? Tell the audience the truth. Gilberto sent you a text message behind. <laughs> what? Get some bitch out of here. Get this <laughs> some bitch out of here. Well, let me tell you something, Gilberto. Just like Chief Squeedum. Chief Squeedum. Uh, have you washed the shirt yet? You've been wearing it every day, Dan. Hopefully you washed it at least. Bro, once. this is AI. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> Do you understand? I'm not even real. Fernando's telling me what to say through a typing you're a, thing. you're a persona but i tried giving out your real name and your brother got mad at me so i'm sorry yeah no that. no real names no real names by the way uh yeah of course i had time today i i got a new job coaching so oh a little change you by the way i wanted this? to say uh I'm proud of you for that one you're what, you're really moving on up i know dude it was it's something new but you know what it is it is you what gotta, it is at an undisclosed high school with, i was gonna say so different high school yeah, at an undisclosed high school. Yeah, different position. <laughs> Could you imagine me dealing with skilled players? I'd be arrested. <laughs> I'd be arrested. Oh, I, I thought you were going somewhere else. Out. Like, why are you asking me this weird question? No, no, okay. no, okay. no. Of course, I only deal with the hogs. Okay. Dude, I hate. But a skilled player would be a nightmare, dude. But different high school. Different high school. This so, is big. You, I'm surprised you haven't told me. I, okay, all right. I, 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 I'll, I'll, you know I'll how it goes, bro. You know how it goes, bro. We're all grinding. It was so funny. Like, right. uh, it was sad with my coaching buddies. Yeah. It was it was tough, but we still love each other. Maybe. I don't Congrats, know. Dan. Though, clap it up. I know. Dan. Shout out. Shout out, dude. Shout out. Yeah, anyway, awesome. all right. I'm getting booted. Everyone, get in the chat and tell Herberto how big of a scumbag he is. New new coach. Long here. snapper coach at undisclosed high school. Dan and Long Diego. snapper. Let me tell you something about. <laughs> I'm trying kid show, kid show. <laughs> yeah, so today was the first lifting sesh that I went to, so it's gonna be wild. Mm. It's gonna be wild. We'll see what happens. New uh, yeah, new we... minds to mold. Give them the bull. I know. Yeah, I'm gonna meet with all the linemen after uh, spring break with some pizza. All right, there you go. It's gonna be awesome. Congrats, and... Jorge. I don't even like what that means. Don't even show that comment. <laughs> oh, my He's not God. a flower. He's <laughs> not a flower. <laughs> my God. All right. See you later, gents. Uh, get the hell out of here. All right. Later. That is Dan and Dago. Jorge, that was for you. Oh, he said what? <laughs> I said he, he said it. Get the hell out of my yeah, show. You see show. the type of whore I have to deal with? Get off my set already. A newer. A newer. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Uh, yeah. No. So I saw him from the corner of my eye and I texted him, hey, do you want to do you want to jump on? He's like, hell yeah. I'll give Hilberto some bullshit to go on. So. <laughs> Uh, he jumped on real quick. Oh, did you guys just talk through your like eye motion? I... No, 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 I texted him. I texted oh, okay. him in one of those. So yeah, but uh, we go from one compa to another. Uh, we now have uh, Vic, the producer. Vic, how are you doing? Doing good. How are you guys doing? Chilling, Not chilling. Too bad. Down, I was doing well until Dan and Dago showed up. Uh, oh, we're hanging in there. He crashed. He crashed the party. It, it, yeah. it, it, Blow it, it out it, of your ass. <laughs> 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 Who gave him control of the freaking show here? Uh, well, he does all of our editing, so obviously uh, he had to do all that. So, uh, yeah. well, when it comes to the videos, but uh, social media. But, yeah, no, so now we have uh, Victor Producer for a little rapid fire. Yo! So boom, boom, boom. let's get it going, Vic. All right. Well, Fernando won last week. So who's gonna go first, guys? Who 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 wants to go first as I start uh, to ask the questions? Uh, it makes sense. Uh, uh, I'll I'll go first. 
Did you All have right. you read the questions that you prepared for now? I was reading it right now, actually. <laughs> okay, yeah. All, right. all right, here we go, guys. Oh, that's how uh, I prepared for college. That's how I graduated college. We're all good. And my master's program. Okay. No, actually, on my master's program, I actually grinded. You remember, you saw me, Gilbert. So I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> We've but, all yeah. done that, Fernando. So here we go. NFL yeah. free agency has slowed down, and the attention has now turned to the NFL draft in Detroit next month. It makes sense for the Bears to go with the quarterback at number one with all the weapons they have on their current roster. But is it fair or foul to question what the commanders or Patriots would be doing by taking a quarterback with the when you look at their O-line and their lacks uh, of skill players? So... I think the reason why a lot of this happens is people get impatient and they look at they look at the fancy toys. And that's kind of what the problem has been right now with when you talk about like let's just pick a team like the Charge where everybody's like, "Well, they could go receiver at 5." And everybody's mad because they're thinking about going for or people think that they might go for an offensive tackle. Well, sometimes you ha- you you have luxuries, but you need to fix the holes that you have on your team. So that's why I, I think that the commanders and I think the commanders are positioned a little bit better than the Patriots with the Patriots, man. I, I would fill out the rest of that team and then try and get myself a quarterback. I, sometimes when you put the cart, uh, when you put the cart before the horse, stuff goes bad. I mean, if you think about it, like when some guys have come out like uh, like a Justin Herbert, that's why he excelled so quickly was because there were weapons around him already. Like they already had some pieces around him. And when you look at other guys who have come out, I mean, it's taken them some time. I mean, Joe Burrow, I mean, I know he played well his first year, but it took him some time until they got Jamar Chase. And uh, now they're trying to build, now they're trying to fix the offensive line around him. And that's kind of a struggle. That's why they lost that Super Bowl, because if they would add better offensive line play, they would have been able to uh, maybe end up winning that uh, Super Bowl. But it's just of what your what your team believes in and i mean we've talked about it gilbert uh eric and i talked about it on the way home from usc these decisions that the that the bears the commanders and the patriots have will win it'll keep your job or, or extend your job or it'll get you fired even the cardinals the cardinals also like are you gonna trade down or are you gonna wait and uh, take Marvin Harrison Jr. The Cardinals have a lot of holes too, and they need to keep Kyler Murray upright. I mean, that that's going to be the question mark too. Can you go two for one, get the 11th and the 23rd from the Minnesota Vikings so that they can get J.J. McCarthy? So at the end of the day, I think it's actually fair to question the commanders and the Patriots because they have needs elsewhere. Why are you going to put a quarterback in there if your offensive line isn't good? Just, just take a beating. We've seen that happen before way too many times. Why let it happen again? So I, I, I would question it if I was them, to be completely honest. Yeah. Uh, so it's, I'm trying to find a way to, to give you a direct answer, but I, I think it's all about situations. and Situations are situational. Yes, they're all different. But to give you a real answer, you know, like Fernando, I guess just I'll go the opposite way. When, when you got to get a quarterback and, and the biggest priority you got to get on your roster, it's a quarterback. And you don't want to get in trouble and reach, but like, these are top three picks. Like when are you going to like, you're pretty much saying, Oh, we're going to be in the top three next year. Like you're saying you're going to lose next year and lose the year after that. Like you don't want to be in this spot. Like you never know when you like, you don't, you don't want to be caught like the Vikings and be with Kirk cousins every year, eight and nine, nine and eight, like always in the middle. You got to find a quarterback. So I think these teams need to get there, but they kind of give you more off of that. So uh, that's my answer. You got to go with the quarterback, but the commanders, who the hell do they have? They just traded Sam. How you have the number two pick. You're not number three. I think number two, you're fine. You know, obviously, it's gonna be Caleb Williams. I think Drake May is gonna be a big, a big time prospect. I think it's gonna be all Drake May. I feel like, but look at the Patriots. Now you're going with the third quarterback. How many times did we see a star quarterback after one or two become the third quarterback? It's it's rare when it's a number three quarterback that becomes a star. Sometimes you know it goes from like obviously 2020. Just uh, uh, Justin Herbert was number three quarterback, right? Two was number two, and then number one was Joe Burrow. So uh, maybe the team be ahead of you could pick poorly. But the Patriots are in a weird position because they also need wide receivers. And you want to get Marvin Harrison Jr. or you're being offered three first round picks to back off. So I think with the Patriots, like you got to think about it, but they need a quarterback. What the hell do you do? Jacoby Brissett throw it to Mar- Marvin Harrison Jr. for the next few years. When are you going to find the quarterback? That's what I don't like. Like for now, like here's, here's to your point. Like, like when the when the Bengals got Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, I'd rather have that and then go sign Lyman. I get it. Lyman are better when you get them younger. But I'd rather have Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. I'll get Orlando Brown Jr. I'll pay that guy. I'll, I'll pay. I'll pay whoever. 
I'll figure it out later. You want to get a quarterback, and that's where I end my point. Yeah, for me, it's it's kind of hard just to, you know, actually know where these two teams are wanting to go. Like, because the commanders went out and spent a bunch in free agency, but their offensive line isn't great. And then you look at the Patriots. And so if you have, if you're drafting quarterbacks, are you going to sit them? If you're planning to sit them their first year, it makes a lot of sense. But at the same time, you know, you have to, you know, I'm big on rookie contracts. If you're going to, especially when it comes to your quarterback, if you're going to do that, then you do it. So uh, I'm giving the point here to Fernando because he made the best point uh, with what he said. And then a couple of uh, people on the comments also agree with that. So because of that, Gilbert, I'm giving it to I, Fernando. I don't know. I, I don't even think Fernando can name the quarterback right now as starter of the commanders, but whatever. <laughs> but, but let's pass on the quarterback, whatever. <laughs> All right, Gilbert. Well, well, I mean, uh, like, if we're <laughs> honestly, being honest, I, I don't even know who it is. I think the trade Sam Howell. Who the hell is it? I, I agree with what Vic is saying, though. I mean, yeah. I think Caleb is the only one that could start right now. I think everybody else is kind of like, I don't know, friend. I don't Mark know. Like, like, when this guy, like, I told you his backyard style, he needs to wait a little bit, but whatever. No, I, and I agree too, but I think with those weapons, they're not going to let him. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah that's why. Let him you know. keep on going. So, and that that's what makes me. Uh, <laughs> Freaking Jorge. Uh, <laughs> hey, I, I wasn't being put on the spot. Vic is the one asking the question. You know what? Let me look it up right now. Gilbert wasn't you know, the yeah. one asking the – or Vic is the one asking the question, not Gilbert. But I – and I agree with you, actually, about that whole backyard style, but I don't think they're going to – Oh, it's Marcus Mariota. I forgot. Sorry. Oh, damn. Oh, dude, he looked like he aged a crap ton the other day when I saw him. Yeah, gray hair. Um, But, yeah, I, 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 I mean, yeah, I agree with you. I think that they should all sit. But the one that really is keep keeps on gaining a lot of momentum is JJ McCarthy. And then when you have Jim Harbaugh talking about him, like there's there's somebody's gonna fall for I, don't know. I see that. those throws, people are falling in love, and I think about Zach Wilson. But I was just gonna yeah. say the man had no Yeah. Well, we'll He's see what happens with that. All right, guys. Number two here. We've all seen how out of control the gambling scandal going on with Shohei Otani mm -hmm. and his interpreter has gone this week. Uh he even talked today, had a statement and everything. So the NFL has had to that one, John? has had to suspend players for gambling the past two years, but it hasn't involved any of their top players. If Patrick Mahomes was in the same situation as Otani, would this be a bigger deal? And should the NFL be keeping a close eye on this Otani case? I go first, right? Yes, for sure. If, if Patrick Mahomes is part of this where he doesn't speak English and what is he speaking for now? Spanish, I guess. And he hasn't uh, I was on being chilling. Was I was on being chilling. <laughs> I don't know what the hell you're saying. Chinese, Japanese, or Mandarin. Sorry, Mandarin. Chinese or that's Mandarin. Mandarin that's right. what John Cena said that got him in trouble. Uh, or no, well, that's a something that John Cena said. He's talking about ice cream. That's okay, ice don't cream. Get, don't get yourself in I trouble. I like ice but, cream. Uh, yes, no, it'll, be, it'll be massive news, but it, it's kind of a weird thing because you don't know if show his a part of it. Same, But same thing will be with, 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 say, it's a Mahomes or a LeBron. Like, hey, like, I'm close to that guy, but I'm not a part of it, so... I don't know. And I, the, the more I think about, it, like, I don't know, like, why do you give this guy so much trust to? It's a little, it's a little fishy. Uh, yeah, get it right, Fernando. Uh, but I don't know. But with Shohei Tana being part of this, it's a bad look. And I know, Victor, you know this well. This guy does not want to be part of the spotlight, doesn't want to be part of negative news like that. He's probably hating it right now. I think, I think he spoke today or about to speak today. I don't know. No, he already but, did. Okay. So to be connected no with this, no cameras were allowed, no questions were allowed. I want to say Shohei Guilty. did not. I want to say Shohei like knows nothing because you just hired a guy to help you out to like translate. But like then I'm reading stories that these guys were best friends. They were like like they're like you know actually hitting it off. I don't know. It could be something shady, but also just kind of knowing the guy. Maybe he's secreted for a reason, or maybe he's secret because he's not doesn't in, he's not into stuff like that. I don't know. But it, to answer the question, it would be it would be a lot of twenty four seven coverage if that was in the NFL with a star quarterback. All of a sudden, he's doing more media. All of a sudden, his girlfriend appears. All of a sudden, he was doing all kinds of stuff. Those damn Dodgers, huh? I, I'm telling you. I, did you see whose locker he has? I do. I did not. <laughs> our our good our compa uh, uh, Dylan Hernandez tweeted out that he has Julio Urias's uh, old locker. Oh, man, that's bad so... luck already. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. No, I, there's no way I can. There's no way I can. Uh, I can counter what Gilbert said, just because we've seen already the NFL has cracked down on all these guys. The NBA actually just suspended, uh, or they're investigating 
um, uh, Raptor center, uh, John Tay Porter, uh, according to Woj, Toronto center, John Tay Porter is out of the lineup and a subject of an NBA investigation into irregular, ir- ir- irregularities on prop yeah. betting you involving, read English? involving him. Yeah. Okay. Let's freaking put a, a, a freaking mouth buster on you. Oh God. <laughs> okay. Can we stop? <laughs> A a tongue buster. twister. There you go. A tongue twister. And let's see if it, you don't. It is March him. Madness. You got to say bracket buster, but okay. Well, yeah, but uh, but it, every other league is cracking down. So I'm going to be interested to see this Shohei Otani thing. I'm telling you, I just I just don't know. I mean, I've seen it before. I mean, you've seen agents and other people handle the money of other of athletes, but a guy like Shohei, I it's just hard for me to believe a that translator. He's Come on, Shohei. Exactly, a translator, like not even an accountant or this or that. And then, like, all this money, like, some guy on Twitter the other day was like, uh, he's like, oh, I've been in banking. 4.5 million is hard to, like, without the knowledge of somebody knowing, there's no way you can do a wire transfer or something like that. I was just like, oh, wow. So, yeah, I I, I don't know. I, I just... I know he's a big star, but I mean, another big star was Fernando Tatis Jr. And everybody like crapped all over him. So I think they, and I mean, it's obviously different and everything, but uh, it's just going to be interesting to see if this is the next pillar to fall when it comes to uh, a face of baseball kind of going down a little bit. Um, But I don't know. I I think they should investigate it hardcore and see what they come out of this because that was just really uh, everything. Just seems really shady when it comes to uh, to this whole betting thing. But I think I think we're only scratching the surface. To be honest, I think not just with Otani. I'm talking about in general, in sports in general. I think more and more stuff is starting to come out. I mean, yeah, we saw some. Let's just be honest. Lower tier players kind of do it. Well, now is when Otani could be the one, the ringleader of uh, wildfire <laughs> between. Uh, bigger name stars, so I'm just saying it, it could get I, even. I want to see Otani wearing a Calvin Ridley jersey on opening day. How about that? No, he oh, should wear a compass on the beat. Sure, oh, yeah, that too. Wait. Vic is a huge fan of his. There you go. Do it for us. Do it for Vic. All right, go ahead. Uh, my bad. I, I'm giving this point to uh, Gilbert. He's right. I mean, I think part of the the problem too, guys, is that you know we're in the wild wild west right now when it comes to gambling. You know. The owners in every sport decided, hey, we're going to dip our toes into gambling. And now you're going to start seeing like, and I think part of the reason why the NFL needs to keep a close eye on it is because if it happens to someone like Patrick Mahomes, like one of their big stars, this could implode on them and it look make them look like, especially here in the United States, it's a bigger deal because Otani is a global uh, uh, player. And so I think that's why it's going to become a bigger deal. I, I This isn't over, even with the statement that he just put out. I think, you know, you're still going to hear from it. I think the reason he put it out now is because he just wants to play. And then whenever he gets asked, now he's just going to say, hey, my lawyers are taking care of it. So it's just something to kind of keep an eye on if you're the NFL, because if one, if it's one of your big stars, it's going to it's going to get even it's going to be a bigger story. And then right now, I think all the sports leagues needs to need to be in line with this stuff because you need to come out with the, you know, kind of like what they did, the NFL did with, by suspending Cal, Calvin Ridley for a year. Like, you know, we'll see what happens with this investigation because we'll see whether or not MLB decides to suspend him or find him. But it, it'll you know be what I'm more interested, you know what I'm more interested in real quick is uh how this is all uh like, if the leagues are going to be working together on all this, yes. because, that's going to, if they can all join up and kind of do it like an Avengers of uh, NFL league or the uh, uh, sporting leagues, it's going to be interesting to see if they join up together, what they're going to find. Cause like I said, if Otani's found guilty, like they're just going to keep on, they're going to keep on coming uh, at him. But uh, I want to see what, and what the rest of the MLB like stadiums are going to be like for Shohei when he goes to other stadiums. I wonder if they're going to players or opposing teams are going to give him crap. Uh, for yeah, it, but, they'll, they'll yeah. find a way. Yeah, 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 like I like I wrote. I mean, the Dodgers should, should just go out all heel, man. Like just, just you know, this is what is you know what is gonna turn into because they're gonna be the number one team right now that everybody's gonna hate on. So you might as well, you know, become the heel. All right, guys. Third question tied up one one. The Titans and Colts have gone about free agency in two different ways this year. 
Colts have decided to retain most of their free agents, while the Titans have decided to outspend every team to fill most of their roster needs. Which way, which way will prove to be the right way of doing things this offseason? I, I think it's you, Fernando. It's me. Uh, I'm going to go with the Colts. Why? Because the Colts were one one drive away from being able to make the playoffs. And the Titans just – they. I mean, is is uh the mayonnaise eating peel eating uh, mayonnaise and coffee? Yeah, mayonnaise and coffee drinking, uh, <laughs> banana peel eating son of a gun. Will Levis is he gonna be the uh is he gonna be the the starting quarterback? Also, DeAndre Hopkins does he still want to be there or will he at one point be like you know what I want to go win a ring before this is all said and done? No more Derrick Henry, so you're not gonna be able to depend on Derrick Henry. Co- uh, being able to carry uh, carry the team, I was going to say the load, uh, carrying the the um, the offense. Um, there's some question marks about the defense. So I, I I just I don't really believe in what the Titans are doing now on the cold side. Anthony, there's no more Gardner Minshew, so it's going to be Anthony Richardson. Uh, now is he going to be healthy? Is he going to change his style? That's uh, that's what I'm interested in in seeing, but. Just overall, I I just like I I like what the Colts have. Kenny Moore, they got re-signed. They have some pieces there. I really feel like they're really close. They just need Anthony Richardson to really kind of take off. I still think they need an offensive weapon or two, and uh, with some other pieces, I think they'd be they'd be a playoff team. But and obviously, we know the AFC is freaking loaded with talent all over the place. So that's going to be interesting. But I, I, if I had to choose one of the two models, I would go with. Uh, paying my own because it, the Colts have drafted really well, and now they have Shane Steichen in there, who I thought he did a heck of a job his first season. Um, after obviously being a top five team in the draft last year, they did a lot better, and they were close to beating C.J. Stroud and the Houston Texans and knocking them out of being able to go to the playoffs. So I'm going to go with the Colts model uh, over the Titans. Yeah, you know I, I like the Colts model uh, uh, as well, but. You know, I feel like the Colts are not like they still need a lot of areas. Like they still need another playmaker, but they resigned Michael Pitt- Pittman Jr. He probably would, would have been the what maybe second or third best wide receiver if all of them went to yeah. free agency. Uh, Mike Evans got resigned. So what are you gonna do? Go sign Marque- 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 Marquise Brown. There you go. Sorry. Uh, so they got that, and they got you know a lot of defensive players back too. They need another edge rusher. I feel like, but again, what are you gonna do? Get Jadavion Clowney? Uh, you're gonna take a chance on Bryce Huff and Jonathan Grenard. Paid them a bunch of money for being what? A rotational guy last year so they were smart they have a path they have a plan keep building through the draft now with the tennessee titans like i want to like their team they got them better for sure but it's like you invested a lot of money on a, on a team you've never put together you, you invested a lot of money on players with a rookie head coach and brian callahan and by the way a lot of people love uh, brian callahan like he was due to be an offensive you know genius he finally got his shot but like you pay Calvin Ridley. You trade for the Jerry Sneed. Uh, you pay for Tony Paul, or you pay for the 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 center oh, uh, Lloyd Cushenberry. So they loaded up on, on a lot of pieces. I get it. they need a lot of you know uh, players for a, a roster filled with holes. They don't have that many holes, but like you look at the roster, it's kind of like I don't know. Maybe it could be a wild card team. But then again, as Victor always says, don't fall into the trap of having the same teams in the NFL playoffs every year. So they could be that team, but like when you spend so much in free agency, you get really aggressive. It's just a recipe for disaster. Like, whatever doesn't work out, you can't get out of these contracts for maybe t- a couple of years. So you're kind of screwed over there. But I like I like the Legere's need trade. You know, you, you got only you got him for a third round pick, but you had to commit seventy, eighty million dollars to the guy who might have been a product of the system. He might have been a guy who benefited from a very loaded defense. You don't know, but you know I get it. They needed to be more aggressive, but not that aggressive. That's why I didn't like the Titans. I wanted to say. They were a winner is off season, but it was just they went too far and I didn't like it at the end. I you know it's interesting real quick. The uh, Jerry Sneed felt like it came to the Titans and the Colts down to those two teams to see who got them. And uh, I would have liked we, it more with the Colts actually. I thought I thought it would have been better. They're Gus Bradley, I think Gus Bradley would have been able to use him uh, in an interesting way. I mean, we've seen how many how many cornerbacks have emerged. Kenny Moore has emerged. Casey Hayward a couple of years yeah. ago with the Chargers. Uh, yeah, so I, I I agree with you. I would have liked them better on the on the Colts just because of their dynamic and the way their defense is built. But I I, I agree with what you're saying. 
Uh, because both of you guys went from the for the same team here or the same point, I'm gonna both give you guys a point here. But let me let me just give you guys a little bit of information here. So Chris Valor has been with the Colts now for a number of years. He kind of reminds me of Tom Telesco and the way he does things. He, you know, uh, for whatever reason, he's one of those guys that won't get fired just because either the owner just trusts him or the team is too cheap. So. One of the one of the reporters Owner can't make decisions. Yeah, the uh, the one of the re, one of the reporters for He's the in the Colts, bathroom. <laughs> that's why, right? Um, yeah. He 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 found out that Chris Ballard, when he signs players, he usually ends up cutting them. They ne don't end up making the roster. So maybe he's not really good at picking up free agents. So he's just resigning his own guys. Now, where mm -hmm. I'll give the Titans here a little bit of credit. And if you look at the AFC South the last two years, the last place team has gone on to win the division. The, the, the Jaguars the year before and now the Houston Texans. So one of the reasons I kind of like what the Titans have done is because at least they've gone out and spent and try to help out Will Levis. I don't see the same thing with Anthony Richardson. We only The thing is, too, with Anthony Richardson, out of the four games he played, he only finished one game. So the, the jury is still out oh, on – on on Cole, okay. on 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 Richardson, so I'll give you guys both the point here. But I I would have I would have gone with the Titans here just because at least they're being aggressive and they're trying to do something rather than just relying on the draft. And you know the draft is the way to go. I'm not I'm not you know, but that's the other thing. Like at least try and be aggressive for someone like Anthony Richardson. And I you know who do you have now as a backup? Joe Flacco. Are you expecting oh, yeah. Joe, Fl Joe Flacco to be that guy okay. again? Yeah. You know, that's the other problem. So just something to keep an, keep an eye on there. All right, guys, still tied up at one. Here we go. Which proposal – I know you guys were talking about it, so I kind of wanted to throw this out there as well. Which proposal being voted on by the NFL owners will have the biggest impact next season if it passed? We know one of them already passed, and that's the hip drop tackle. But what about the new kickoff rule? Um which one will have the bigger impact next season for you guys? And I think uh, Fernando starts this one off. No, I, it's no. it was it's Gilbert. Me, I think. But I'll I'll keep it short. I'm sure we're gonna have me. the same. It's gonna be, yeah, hello. Uh, we're gonna have the, probably the same answer, but it's obviously uh, like obviously like it's not the question who's gonna have the best impact or the worst, and like it's it's an impact, and it's gonna be for sure. Uh, the hip drop tackle is going to be probably for the worst, for the negative, or we could be very surprised and it's for the best and player injuries are down, players figure it out. But I don't know. When I saw the NFLPA saying we are against this, and I'm like, like again, the one that I want to see keep, keep getting passed or, or it keeps getting denied is the the fourth and 20 instead of the onside kick. They keep, you know, you know, saying, let's try that one next time, next time. Why can't we do that with the hip drop tackle? When, until you get people on board, like we should make a rule where like, okay, the NFLPA says no. And the owners can't agree, but again, it's more control for the owners. Like, or at least something where like they vote for the NFL, then the players get to vote, and it's and maybe like over eighty percent of the players say no. Then you, you got to hold off on it. It just the players are doing the tackling, and they just rush this for some reason, in which I can't really figure out. Is it because the owners are trying to? Are, they're scared that the league won't last for 30, 40 years. Uh, maybe the, the 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 moms and the dads are saying you're going to go play baseball because I don't want you to get a concussion, and it's kind of ruining wow. the. The, the youth sports, I don't know. There's something where they're freaking out and panicking where they want to change this. I don't know if it's all about player healthy. I really don't think that's what it is. But there's something going on there where they're really trying to rush this. And I'm like, why are we rushing here when the players are confused about, okay, if you don't want to do this, I'm sure that nobody wants to get hurt. Nobody wants to see injuries. But why hasn't been a proposed, can you try this? Can you do something different? Can we at least try it out in, in the preseason? And then we'll go from there next year. But no, they want to rush it. So it's going to make a big impact for the negative way. Adam Driver from Star Wars. More, more, more. They want more, more, more points. They want the yeah, offense. That could be it. Yeah, probably over. right, yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. But you remember uh, who was the safety from the Detroit Lions that hit Tyler Higby? Um, uh, Kirby Joseph. Yeah, that you're going to see a lot more of that. He so, injured uh, Higby and Hawkinson back-to-back weeks. There you go. That's going to happen a lot more. So congratulations, NFL. That's what you, you've asked for. That's what's going to end up happening. Remember... When people start, like people have said, I remember uh, Eric Weddle told me one time that players would be like, "Hey, hit me in the hit me in the head. Don't hit me in the legs. Like I'd rather yeah. take, I'd rather take the hit in the head because my legs, I can still come out the next week. A concussion, I probably miss one one or two games. So 
Um, and it wasn't just what it was other players that would say that offensive players would tell them the same thing, but that's exactly what you're, what you're doing here. You're going to have more, like, I remember last year, Derwin James, how many penalties didn't he get or the last two years? And he's like, well, how, what am I supposed to do? Like, especially when guys lower their head. So now the hip tackle thing is going to happen. I, like we said earlier, there are small corners in here who sometimes go up against tight end. Like if sauce Gardner is going up against Travis Kelsey, what is he supposed to do? Just like basically hold them and uh, wait for somebody to get there to tackle them. Like it, it's going to be interesting, but uh, I'll go to the other side of this. I guess I, I just needed to rant a little bit on that. Um, which will have the biggest impact. I think the new kickoff rule will have a, a huge impact uh, just because I think we're going to see more explosive plays. Uh, I think there's going to be uh, an emphasis on the return game. I mean, obviously we have guys like Jamal Agnew. Um, Darius Davis was a guy last year for the Chargers who kind of emerged as a little uh, electric uh, weapon. There's other guys who I think have a chance, and now you might have a better chance of being able to return um, – to return some of these plays. So I think that's going to be, have a huge impact. I think it's going to be, it's going to look interesting Thursday night in Kansas city. Uh, I know we're going to see it in preseason or whatever, but I want to see, uh, I mean, if, if it, uh, obviously if it goes through or whatever, but I'd be interested to see Thursday night in Kansas city. Uh, the first time they do it, I, I'd be interested to see what happens there and, and uh, who's the team that they're facing. But I definitely think that the kickoff uh, rule would be, will, have a huge impact next year in the way some of this stuff is uh, run. I was going to give you the point, Fernando, because I, I really like what you had to say about the hip drop, but you changed it. And so I'm going to give it to Gilbert because I think the hip drop is going to have an effect because of what you said, Fernando. I think, you know, you're going to see more ACL now being, you know, you're going to blown out because people are going to go low now and they're going to go after the knees and you're going to see guys getting Uncle flipped Biden. over a lot more. And I think that's going to have a bigger impact than the kickoff. The kickoff is going to be exciting and we're going to see a lot more stuff going on with that. But I think in terms of on the field, I think you're going to see a lot more injuries and that's going to be more of an impact because we've been saying it. They don't want to, they don't want guys to get hit on, uh, on the head. So now you're you now now you're eliminating the hip drop. Guess what's going to happen? They're going to go low with the helmet, and you're going to see a lot of dudes, you know, blowing out a ACLs and Achilles and stuff like that. So, but I'm going to give the point there because you changed it. I'll give it to uh, okay. Gilbert there. Um, all right, next one, guys. Uh, if, uh, we're going to go over to Combat Sports. Was that Dana White right to quickly release a fighter who bid an opponent this past weekend, Igor? Severino bites Andre Lima. It's you, right? I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say it was too quick. Wow. Okay. Um, I think that would have made an interesting second fight. I think <laughs> if the guy could have gotten his revenge, that would have been a little bit more interesting. Um, look, guys have done it before. Luis Suarez uh, from uh, right, right now he's with Inter Miami. He's already retired and he's playing at Inter Miami. Um, but, uh, he played for Liverpool. I remember in the world cup in 2014, if I'm not mistaken, and down in, uh, in Brazil, he bit, uh, well, actually when he was with live our pool, he bit a guy one time, uh, and then he bit another one when they were down in the world cup and, and he got suspended for a while. Uh, Mike Tyson bit a dude's ear off. I mean, you remember some of that stuff. So yeah, I, I might've just waited and seen. I mean, if the jackass does it again, obviously, yeah, I would have uh, suspended him, but he was obviously, um, it was his first loss in, MM in his M MMA career. And he came out from Dana White's uh, contender series, but obviously he felt like he needed to do this. I might've waited and chilled on it a little bit and seen what happened next. But, um, but I guess Dana's a uh, zero tolerance on, uh, on that kind of stuff. But, I might have waited a little bit just to see uh, if you could have milked that a little bit more. Yeah, uh, I, I like it. I, I, I get it that if, if it's Conor McGregor or Sean O'Malley or whatever, Izzy Arizana, anybody who's a star power and they bite somebody, you're not going to cut them. I get it. But it's, it's a good way to kind of just set the tone and the standard. Like, we're not going to mess around with this crap here. Like, who are you, by the way, uh, Igor, or whatever you want to call yourself? Uh, you're a nobody. You You went too far. You can't do that here. And also, like, the UFC, it's not like unboxing. You can go to go to PVC, to Golden Board, to Top Rank, whatever. It's all UFC. They have the power. So why not use it? Set the set the tone for anybody coming up in, in the uh, Dana White's Contender Series or whatever, Ultimate Fighter. Like, if you're a new guy trying to make it, 
don't do that crap. Don't go, don't do the the low blows and the biting, uh, the head butts, whatever. Or hitting somebody when they're when they're down and you're, you know, they're they're facing the other way. Uh, just set the tone and the standard. I like that when I sound like, oh, quick, okay, I like it, Dana White. So for me, uh, be the ruler and the dictator that you are, Dana White. Freaking yeah, Gilbert I'm... Gore's about to get knocked down, and it's gonna be Igor. Uh, what did you just <laughs> yeah, say about me? Don't, don't bite me, apparently, but whatever. I'm giving the point to Fernando. He's right. I mean, look, he the, the opponent even even got an extra. He he gave he gave him some extra money as well for getting bid, which I understand as well. But I'm with Fernando. At least you know. Let him. I would have loved. I want to see a rematch now. Like now he's gone and no, we don't. Gonna... Nobody knows who the hell these guys are. Come on. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, last one, just to kind of uh, you know um, uh, break the tie here. I was gonna go with the UFL uh, question here, but I'm gonna switch it up just mm-hmm. because you know we. I wanna I wanna get a, a wrestling question in here. So you know we saw that Aaron Donald retired last week, and you know uh, I saw that the WWE is doing a new show or documentary or docu series where they're you're they're gonna show. A lot of these uh, people who are trying to try out, right, for WWE and trying to find the next WWE superstar. And so, you know, they, we've seen a lot of NFL players be, you know, you know, like Roman Reigns, you know, former former guys who made it to WWE and be, became superstars. So is there a not just an NFL player, but is there a, a just professional guy, whether he's retired already or someone who is still active that you would love to see become a pro wrestler in WWE or maybe even an AEW? That's you. Go, I was going to say, go ahead, friend. I don't know. Victor with the uh, very detailed question that I've never thought of. Uh, it's easy. Yeah, I, I knew Kittle. you had something. Uh, George Kittle. George Kittle's done it. He's a good wrestler. I think he could be a good wrestler, and I think he could be good on the mic. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I think George, uh, obviously, you you have some stuff that you need to tweak. Man, I, I'm telling you, I've seen some of these videos. They're intense. Like, the coaches are intense. And just because George Kittle's George Kittle, I don't think they take it easy on him. So I think it'd be really interesting to see the way George Kittle would kind of adapt to that world. Uh, I know people say that WWE's fake, that it's it. I encourage those people to go and watch that series to see how fake it. Like, there's a chick who has a bruise, like, over here, and it just – purple and you're like wow like they do take bumps they do do all that yes it is choreographed but still it's it's still not you're still throwing yourself off of a ladder like it's still uh all that stuff but i think george kittle has a charisma he's an athletic freak i think he'd be really good transitioning over to that i think he'd like to do it i'm sure i know last year he just bumped the miz like he kind of just like uh shoulder checked him I, I bet you the 49ers, like he had to have asked the 49ers, hey, is it cool if I do this? Uh, and I'm sure they were kind of like, yeah, but just relax with that. I know Gronk was in there for a while. Then he went back to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I believe. Or, yeah, no, he went back to Tampa Bay. Um, that's when he came out of retirement and went to go play yeah. for the Bucs. Um, he was kind of a dud because you don't know if he's real or if he's fake. That's kind of the thing I've, I've uh, the thing about Gronk's personality, like, at times he wants to be the the wild child, and other times he's kind of like tries to be I don't know different. So I, I never bought him in the WWE. I thought he was going to wrestle, and then I heard that story that he didn't want to throw himself off of a little ledge uh, into into players or whatever into the wrestlers into like a pit of wrestlers. And seventy four year old Vince McMahon had to show him how to do it, and then Gronk did it. I'm like, okay, yeah, you're not cut out for this. But I think Kittle is. I think Kittle in that world would be tremendous. And I feel like he would really uh, – I'm not saying he's going to win any belts or anything, but I think he'd be close to what Pat McAfee, Stephen Amell, some of these guys have done where they go from actors or or, prof- or players to uh, jumping into the squared circle. So I, I think George Kittle would be really good. I, and you can you can hear him, like, even at the Super Bowl, even when I've asked him before about wrestling, like, you can tell one day he does want to do that. So I think it'd be uh, funny to see him in WWE. Good answer, Fernando. Can't compete, but I'll have fun with it. Uh, the the three point shooter from Oakland, the basketball team at the city, the from March Madness, the white guy. He just kept doing a bunch of threes, doing like this and doing this, just celebrating for every three pointer he made. I thought this guy was over the top, so why not be in the in pro wrestling? There you go. I thought you were I, like when you said Oak. I was like, wait, who's he talking about? Oh, like, Oakland, okay, the, the basketball team that won their one tournament yeah, 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 and yeah, lost yeah. in the second no. round. 
I was wondering who you were. Who you were? I forgot the guy's name, but he was very. Anytime he made a three pointer, he had a celebration. I'm like, dude, relax. He made a bunch of three pointers, but yeah. Oh, flipping hell. Just well, the obvious game. winner, of course, is Fernando. But I thought you would have a little bit more fun with it, Gilbert. I thought you could nah. at least give me like a like an Aaron Dono. I mean, he would be perfect nah, for this. He wouldn't I mean, be good on the microphone, though. I'll tell you that. I mean, you. I mean, <laughs> we saw clown. Ronda Rousey. I mean, how about oh, how there you, you go? <laughs> have you seen what that clown has come out and said? Jeez. Oh, no. All right, I let's can't. move on. This has been a long show. Maybe that's, maybe that's why I wasn't. Hey, Rhonda, how about you get on the mic and show us what mediocrity is? I'll, I'll show you what mediocrity is. Get on the get on the <laughs> mic and we'll see what mediocrity is. She should probably take that cl- that new show, take the class with the new uh, the new show that Triple H is doing. She, in should, LA. Uh, she should come over and I'll, I'll show her a thing or two about how to jump on the mic. Jesus. Uh, thank you, Vic, so much for jumping on with us. That was uh, definitely awesome. Another uh, great uh, edition of uh, Rapid Fire. That is every Monday brought to you by Vic, the producer. Um, so uh, Gilbert, um, obviously, uh, just real quick, uh, thoughts on the Canelo and uh, all that stuff uh, from last week? Yeah, kind of a, a little bit of a boring presser, but I'm not too surprised because, you know, both fighters uh, have respect for each other. It's not like some Ooh. kind of bad. He has some bad blood, some brewery, or like like a something brewing with here, or so, you're trying to marinate something where you just want to get people to get, you know, pissed off and push each other. It's not Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia, so not too surprised with that, you know. But the one thing that's going to help this fight, I think, with Munguia, and and I think Munguia is an entertaining fighter, so I, on that point, from a matchup, I'm, I'm excited to watch it. I'm not saying it's going to be, like, the best fight, but he's going to come to fight. He's, he won't be scared. I, I know, I'm trying to see if he was nervous or anything like that. He would just be unprofessional and being nice to somebody he probably looked up to, but it's not like, hey, I'm, I'm here. I need my money. I, don't, I can't fight and compete. No, I think he's going to be ready to fight. I don't think he's going to... I'm not saying he's going to beat him, but the one thing that's going to help this fight is uh, Canelo's getting a lot of crap now for not fighting David Benavides, and if you... any Anytime Canelo's going to post something, it's like, why are you ducking David, or why, why are you being a duck, or why are you being this and that? So, uh, but Canelo, I, I like what he said, though. I don't like that he said, you got to pay me $200 million to fight David Benavides, but he's right. Benavides is not a real, like a big time name. He's not a household name. So, you know, the more they marinate this fight, and I get it, he might be old, or, or, or I guess, you know, Canelo's going to get too old, or whatever it is, but you know, marinate the fight, and it might be a bigger fight. So, uh, I I'm, I don't blame Canelo for trying to get more money, but that's the only thing I can't, I came away with that. It's like they're trying to build that fight and they're trying to hype it up, and so far they're doing a good job because everybody wants to see David Benavides versus Canelo Alvarez. I uh I thought what Oscar did the next day when he's like, "This is as boring as a uh, Canelo <laughs> Alvarez." I'm like, "Wow!" He didn't say that on the on the podium. Like, say it to his face. I know. So I'm like, whatever. So I just thought. By the way. I just saw uh, a report that P. Diddy's plane is on its way to the Caribbean. They don't know if he's on it or not, but... Is he trying to flee? Trying to leave? Uh, allegedly. Allegedly. I, I just uh, saw a notification, but I'm like, that's not good. <laughs> it's going to get interesting. Uh, Gilbert, I am going to give you the floor. I will step back and let you uh, do your yeah. thing. So... Uh, I will jump out, and then the floor is yours. <laughs> I was hoping you would not leave me alone for this, uh, Fernando, but okay. I will uh, not. No, it's it's fine. But I'm here. Uh, you know, it, it's not easy to share this, but it's bad. It's bad news. And but I wanted to uh, take a couple of minutes to remember uh, my family dog, my dog for the last twelve years, Cam. Uh, Cam unfortunately passed away on Friday. We had to put him down. He had, had a pretty bad uh, tumor has been spreading all over his body and uh it wasn't it wasn't easy to do so uh, i just want to take a moment to remember cam because he saw me from when i graduated from college being a clueless adult i don't know what the hell to do in life uh from going to job to job look at the mustache from from the COVID year so uh all the memories and um just being there for my family being there for the dark times the lonely times uh just always helping us out just to kind of be happy you could be angry but cam was not so uh, R.I.P. to my dog Cam. I can't believe he's gone. But it, uh, for 12 years, 12 good memories, and I get a little emotional watching the picture. So, uh, Fernando, thank you for showing. That's that's gonna be that's his last uh, picture right there as an old man. But uh, so many years, 12 years, and 
I think uh, I want to say he had his last walk, I think, on Thursday. Uh, and then Friday we put him down. So uh, it was not easy to do. So, yeah, I remember that day like it was yesterday. So 12 years. <laughs> that one. I don't know where you found these pictures, by the way, Fernando. So, Your Instagram. Yeah. So uh, 12 years of memories. And the best part, like, you know, I got so busy the last four years. You know, I felt like he started to forget me. That was uh, my birthday in 2020. I had the Kobe mustache there. Uh, but I thought he's going to forget me because he was spending more time with my family. Uh, but every time you saw me, he got so happy. And the best part, he made my family happy. He made my sisters happy. He made my brother happy. Uh, he True made my brother, uh, he, There you go. He made my brother uh, uh, happy, my mom happy. Uh, anybody who's come across him, I know you and your brother got to meet him for a little bit. Uh, Victor knew him uh, very well. So uh, just everybody who was nice to my dog, thank you for that. And thank you for letting me have the moment here. Uh, to remember my dog cam after 12 years r.i.p uh 2012 to 2024 yeah no uh i, I love cam i got to meet him about two or three times uh it, it was so funny because the day that um I, I think it was during covid dan and i went up there because we were starting to kind of do this like we we're starting to put this together and uh so dan and, and gilbert already had a rivalry at that point and uh <laughs> he, and so dan was just sitting there we we're in gilbert's uh on his uh back in his backyard just sitting there in like some lawn furniture and cam just really took to dan and gilbert's like shoot and then dan's like what now i have to like you because cam likes you so it was definitely go. funny if he likes uh, you that means it's a good sign and uh thank you exactly. danny by the way for uh uh, for the comment and also condolences to you for your loss with your dog. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, so thank you for saying that. And Moy, uh, thank you for, for the support as well. But uh, anybody who knows, uh, you know, putting down a, a family pet because you have to, you don't want to make the pet suffer. It's not an easy decision. And there's different reasons how it happens. But uh, uh, I just appreciate the support. And uh, I'm going to remember the 12 years. That's where I focus on. Like You yeah. always think about like, Okay, when when are you gonna when is the time to say goodbye to a pet when when the years just go by and you have so many memories they become a family member, so you kind of try to, you know, ex expect when the day comes. But you, but then it's always like, damn, it came too soon. But always remember the good times in the twelve years. Uh, so Danny, thank you for the support there, and hopefully, uh, uh, condolences and to you and your family. You guys get better, and you're right. We will we will reunite soon. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, it's uh. It's rough. I mean, that's why for a long time, like we kind of didn't want a, a dog or anything, because like yeah. you're just like, oh my god, like they you think about it after a couple of years, like shit. When is gonna be the day you get yeah. to like say goodbye? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, and now we have two of the little guys right there. So he's just looking at me. Um. So yeah, Gilbert. Honestly, uh, I love Cam. I like I said, I only met him a couple of times, but he was awesome, and I always loved uh, interacting with him. And I, it always made me laugh because he would fall asleep when we first started this, and you'd be like, hey oh yeah can you hear him and i'd be like ah he's fine oh, okay i'll just say it's the fan or whatever <laughs> and i just start laughing but yeah he's a good uh i i know how much he, you meant or he meant to you so definitely awesome and i, I love that you named him after uh, a certain journalist who <laughs> got you over a million oh, yeah, views yeah. on, uh, yeah, yeah, on sure. uh tiktok so uh when he, he asked a certain question <laughs> but uh but no obviously cam uh you will be missed and uh Thank you for those 12 years, but, um, but yeah, so obviously, uh, now, um, we will be back on Tuesday for a special celebration. It is Hilberto's birthday. So we will be, uh, it will be a, a, a little bit of a shorter show. Um, we'll, tr we'll try and fit in everything so that Gilbert can go and, uh, celebrate his birthday, but. Um, we will jump on tomorrow around four o'clock. Uh, hopefully we have Lorenzo Neal on, uh, Dan and Dago, Vic, the producer, we'll talk about, uh, some stuff. And, and, uh, the good thing about Dan coming on today though, Gilbert, is that he, he'll still want to talk tomorrow, but it won't be as much as, uh, as yeah, it was, good. uh, because he, he got some stuff out of the way today. So, uh, yeah, see, I'm an evil genius. I, I, I see every, I'm like a quarterback. I come out here and I'm like, boom, okay, let's do this. So. But um, again, thank you guys for uh, jumping on. Thank you for everybody who makes this show better. You guys are always in the comments and 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 doing stuff and and really bringing a different energy to the show. We're happy to go live um, again. Thank you guys so much for for jumping on. We will be back tomorrow. Hopefully, Lorenzo Neal will jump on with us. That it's going to be a four p.m. show. So make sure you guys again tune in. Um, and like Dan and Dago said at the beginning, don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter. 
uh go down check it out um oh wow there you go another thing that you and danny have in his hey. daughter's birthday tomorrow hey really oh, okay nice uh happy, happy birthday, birthday to your daughter, daughter. Yeah, yeah 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 happy birthday uh let's uh real quick uh happy birthday to danny's daughter and let's uh there you go <laughs> but uh again thank you guys so much uh don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter don't forget to check out everything else on combos on the beat network don't forget to like comment subscribe by the way the other day i was at chick-fil-a and i had my sweatshirt on and some like the guy kept on like looking at me and i'm like is he looking at me what what, what do you want my goodies i'm like <laughs> no and the, but he was uh looking at me because he's like uh what's what's your sweatshirt and i'm like oh i was like it's a podcast that I started with a, a buddy of mine and, and we've turned it all into a whole show. He's like, what do you guys talk about? I'm like, uh, sports, combat sports. This uh, one they were looking at? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so then he's like, oh, awesome. I'll su subscribe. I was like, oh, I appreciate it. Oh. So then I move on and then little Daniel starts talking to him and uh, I was like, what did he ask you? He's like, like basically what kind of combat sports you guys do? And I said, oh, WWE, boxing, this, that. He's like, oh, that's the kind of stuff that I like. Uh, he's like, I'm going to subscribe then. And then he's like, oh, yeah uh he's like oh we appreciate it and so I'll, and so little he's trying to weasel his way in but little daniel you will not uh but uh but i appreciate uh when people check it out yeah people i've noticed that when i wear my sweatshirt out in public like people are like looking at it and they're kind of like thinking or they're kind of like i wonder what that is so yeah that's pretty uh pretty interesting uh when people check that out but again thank you guys so much uh we appreciate it again don't forget to like comment subscribe don't forget to tell your compas about your compas and don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter but yes. for the time being gilbert sabes que vamonos yeah i know we're almost two hours in but definitely check out the newsletter where it's going to be our third week doing it we're going to we talk a little bit about ourselves what's going on in our lives and whatever thoughts we have in the sports world so please do that go to compas on the beat.com scroll to the middle of the home page shiny gold box like dan said earlier type in your email but that's it uh but on that note Ya nos vamos. Hopefully get Lorenzo tomorrow and Dan, because I do want to see that uh, encounter tomorrow on a Tuesday. But on that note, ya nos vamos, pues. Vámonos. <laughs>